I'm Michelle Wallace. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, under the direction of head coach Mike Anderson, enter the postseason as the number six national seed. And the Huskers have hosted a regional five of the last six years. Manhattan College earned its very first MAC championship last week, and head coach Kevin Layton's Jaspers have won 11 of its last 12. The road to Omaha begins right here on NET and CSTV. NET Sports, in association with College Sports Television, is live from Hawksfield at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska, for the 2006 NCAA Baseball Regionals. The ninth-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers from the Big 12 host the Manhattan Jaspers from the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Hawksfield. Along with Adrian Fiala, I'm Larry Putney. Great to have you with us as we begin a weekend full of regional baseball here in Lincoln, Nebraska. The first matchup of the entire regional is number one seed Nebraska and the fourth seed Manhattan Jaspers, and this is all about pitching. As it normally is, Larry, at this time of the year, all about pitching a study in contrast as far as pitching styles go today. Jabba Chamberlain, a power pitcher for Nebraska, really can bring it up there, upper 90s, Larry. He can get it done. He's had a rough second half of the season, pitched well in the tournament, however, against Texas Tech. Got the win there, so he's got to be on for this team to win. Then you talk about Chris Cody from Manhattan. Well, Chris Cody, Manhattan, really a crafty, crafty, crafty lefty. Crafty lefty, you bet. And he's 11-2 and two on the year, Larry. He's a MAC pitcher of the year. Not very overpowering. He'll even admit that to you, but he said, look, I don't rely on velocity. I rely on spot pitching and finesse, and I keep the hit hitters guessing. I make a miss with the ball bats. I like that. <laughs> As always here at Hawksfield, a throng of red, and among them will be Matt Davison. Matt. Hey, thanks, Larry. Both coaches were asked earlier today how they thought the crowd might affect today's game. Nebraska coach Mike Anderson said he expects a typical Nebraska crowd, a large crowd, a very loud crowd here to support his team. Kevin's, Kevin Layton's bunch from Manhattan, on the other hand, had an interesting response. He said largest crowd we've played in front of all season was about 2,600 fans, but he thinks his kids are going to be excited. They've waited for a game like this their entire lives. He expects them to play a great game today. We'll see how it plays out, guys. All right, thanks, Matt. It's the Jaspers and the Huskers, and the first pitch is coming up next on NET and CSTV. Rachel, please. Can we... Can we please just talk about this? All the lights. It's like Sirius uses their satellites to figure out exactly what to play. Rachel, look out! At Sirius Satellite Radio, we do not use our satellites to know exactly what to play. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like... Oh, well, I was just going to say that... It's like we're reading your mind? Nah. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. Introducing Power Bar Triple Threat. It fuels like a power bar and tastes like a candy bar. One bite and you'll feel like you can take on anything. Be great. Warning, this movie contains unrated scenes of comedy and hilariousness. It's deep. From two of the six writers of Scary Movie comes the unrated version you couldn't see in theaters. Own Date Movie on DVD today. A beautiful day at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska for this regional baseball, NCAA regional between the Manhattan Jaspers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And as expected, this place is packed once again. We're expecting 7,000 plus for a Friday afternoon game. And what great conditions we have for the contest. 82 degrees, sunny skies and the wind, very calm. Humidity at just 34%. You really couldn't ask for much better conditions for a baseball game. And you see the red and they can Continue to pack in here, as we said, more than 7,000 expected for this one o'clock start here in Lincoln. Let's take a look at these two teams, the Manhattan Jaspers from Manhattan, New York, 32 and 21 on the year. The Huskers up and down the line have the advantage. Nebraska's record at 42 and 15. The batting average clearly sways Nebraska's way, 314 to 280. Runs, the Huskers produce more runs, hits, and home runs. The stolen bases is the one place where the Jaspers hope to hurt the Huskers because they do have some speed on the base paths and right at the top of the air order with Nieto who will be running if he gets on base. 
And Larry, let's take a look at the keys to the game here. First for Manhattan. Manhattan has to hit. They have to put the ball in play, put the pressure on the NU defense. They really hit well as a team. Fitzpatrick hits well as a team. Uh, they have six guys hitting uh, over 350 as far as the team hitting. So they have to hit the ball, hit well as a team. Keep, the, keep that hot bat going to the show thus far. Steal the bags you just talked about a moment ago. They've stolen 95. Uh, 95 bases on the year. Uh, they're 19th in the nation with respect to that, Larry. They really put the pressure on the defense. And then play sure defense. Their middle defense with Ruiz and Mark, who have committed a number of errors, but they've got to play sure defense because, Larry, I feel today Nebraska will really put the ball in play. They're going to have to feel the baseball. Let's take a look at the keys for Nebraska here. They have to set the tone of the game early. And by that, I mean get out, hit the hit the baseball. Jabba does his job. If they do that, set the tone there, tell them at end, hey, we own this place and we're going. Jabba, Jabba, Jabba. He really, he's had a rough last uh, half of the year. We really know all about that. But he really uh, came on well in the tournament pitch well there. And then Jeff Christie, his arm, his defense, and his hitting. Jeff Christie is hitting a, a 480 in the last six ball games, but more importantly, he's going to have a, a monumental job to keep those people off the base pass, Larry. So Jeff Christie, a big key for this Husker uh, effort here today. Well, let's take a look at the uh, batting order for the Manhattan Jaspers. The Jaspers on fire as of lately as you look at Kevin Layton, the head coach for the Jaspers. Nieto will lead it off, and he has speed to burn on the base pads. He's attempted 42 steals this year. Good on 38 of those. That's more than double of any Husker. Durba, the catcher, will be in the second hole. Garcia and Rosati will swing clean up. Fitzpatrick is the big hitter on this squad, hitting 580 in his last 10 at uh, 10 games. Lombardi will bat six, followed by Marcou, Ruiz, and Franzesi. And that's a look at the Manhattan batting order. Four defensively for the Huskers. Jaros will be in left, Nimmo in center, and Brown in right. Mort will take third, Worley at short, Opitz is at second, Buckman is at first. As we said, Jabba is on the hill, throwing to the senior, Jeff Christie, behind the hill. Jabba Chamberlain at six foot three, 225 pounds. Uh, Right here from Lincoln, went to Lincoln Northeast High School. Played a year over at uh, UNK, University of Nebraska at Kearney, and uh, surprisingly there, uh, it really wasn't all that outstanding at Kearney, Larry, but uh, just three and six with a 5-2-3 ERA and eight starts, but really came on uh, when he finally arrived here in Nebraska. He'll run it up there uh, uh, in the mid-90s, sometimes hit 97, 98. There's his record on the year, six and four with a 3-8-4 earned run average. Struck out 94, walked just 32. And you compare that with last year, he was 10 and two with a 2-8-1 earned run average. So he had a stretch here of about six games where he pitched as, as a starter, no decisions. But finally, April 13th, came through in the tournament and won against Texas Tech. And earlier today, we talked to Mike Anderson about his starting pitcher. Job is a hard throwing right hander, uh, good velocity, good movement. Uh, has a has a build to throw a slider, uh, change up, a curveball. Um, when he kind of gets all those going, um, you know he's good. So hopefully he can get those in the strike zone and um, get that fastball going too. Work off of that. And Jabba showing a lot of confidence yesterday in the press conference as he talked about, I really don't need to do anything differently. I like where I'm at mechanically. Mike Anderson thinks this is the best he's been all year. Well, Larry, you know he had a, he had a little bit of a problem early in the season with a, started out extremely well. I mean. He was just unhittable for about the first three or four times he went out and then ran into a little glitch, had a little bit of an arm uh, problem, uh, solved that problem, came back. He actually, Larry, in the in the dry spell, without uh, the six-game dry spell that he had, he actually pitched fairly well uh, during that dry spell. But, you know, sometimes the ball just doesn't go your way. Sometimes you hit the ball very hard, it doesn't drop for a hit. But, uh, you know, he's he's ready to go. He's, he's, uh, he's psyched and he's ready to go. And here's a look at the blue crew, Randy Dolan, will be behind the plate. Mattingly is at first. Belfiore is at second, and Speck is at third. And that's your crew for today's game. I'll tell you what, they ought to have. This is a this is a very very uh, interesting matchup. You know, you've got this small team, a, a small conference team. Uh, Larry coming in, and it reminds me a little bit about what happened the last time around with. Illinois Chicago last year they came in here and really get the Huskers all they wanted the other thing about it is you know you're talking about playing guys from New York and you know guys from New York are fairly tough to impress so we'll see if these guys you know if they step on the gas and get after it right away we're about ready to get it underway right here as Eric Nieto steps in so Nieto will lead it off for the Jaspers comes in with speed to burn if he gets on 
First one taken outside. There's a look at Nieto, the 5'10 sophomore from Miami, Florida. Made the Mac All Tournament team as the most outstanding pitcher. And Java touches the corner with the second one. Evens up the count at one and one. Getting 257 on the year, one homer and 22 RBI. And just outside. Two balls, one strike to Eric Nieto. Hitting 425 in his last 10 games. He lines that right at Ryan Worley, who picks it out of the air for the first out of the game. Well, Jabba looks very comfortable out there, Larry, on the mound. Hung one pitch up there uh, that he really wouldn't like to do, but other than that, fairly effective on this first hitter. So the first out in the books for Chamberlain, and that will bring up the catcher for the Jaspers, Nick Durba. 5'10 junior from College Point, New York. Java touches the outside corner for strike one. Java, when locating, can be very difficult on hitters. Durba hitting 3'11 on the air. Second one on the outside corner. Boy, and he ran that one from the outside, outside of the plate, Larry, to the outside corner. Very, very well done. Down 0-2 is Durba. And they say he went. Strike three. Two in the books for Java early, and he has command. Well, he set him up perfectly. Two fastballs outside, and then he comes back with what looked like the slider. Breaking pitch here, obviously. Slider, maybe that curveball, but tremendous uh, action on the baseball. Durba never had a chance. So two down here in the first inning. Mike Garcia now at the plate. Java starts him out in the hole. Interesting. We talked to Kevin Layton before the game. He said he knew his pitchers would have or hitters would have to be aggressive early. And he swung through the slider there, down 0-2. Now well, their hitters were looking fastball, first or second pitch. Java crossed him up right there. Another breaking pitch. Good curveball right there. Slider just misses. Just misses. Good pitch, however, on an 0-2 count. One ball, two strikes to Garcia from Miami, Florida. Swings through it, and Java, two strikeouts, and he is fired up to start things off. Java Chamberlain strikes out two in the first inning, and when Java is on, he can be tough. Here it is again, breaking pitch way outside that uh, Garcia would like to have that back, Larry, but will not get it back at all, but excellent work by Java. You see how far outside that pitch was. He'll watch the tape after this game is over and say, need to be a little more patient out there. Great job by Jabba. We said, hey, Jabba, get out there, set the tone, get it started, get it going right away. He did that here in the first inning. And Chamberlain, as you saw by the reaction into this game early, and spotting and locating those pitches. Let's take a look at the order for the Huskers. Leading off and playing left field will be Nick Jaros. Bryce Nemo will be in center. We'll talk about that momentarily. Ryan Worley at short. Brandon Buckman at first. Andrew Brown is in right field. Andy Gertz, your designated hitter behind the plate. Jeff Christie. Jake Opitz is in the eight hole. And Jake Port will round out the order. Conspicuously missing. Was Dorsett. We'll talk about that momentarily. Here's a look at the lineup. Nieto is in left. Garcia is in center. Franzese is in right. That infield somewhat suspect. The 9.54 fielding percentage. Lombardi and Marcoux have had the biggest trouble at third and second. Cody on the hill and Durba behind the plate. And there's Chris Cody, six foot, 180 pounds. He's a senior out of Brewster, New York. First team All Mac this year. Second time. He has won those honors and also selected as the Mac Pitcher of the Year this year. Fastball will just go 83-85. Sometimes he'll get it to, to 87, but great curveball, changeup, and then a cutter. And he can throw any pitch, Larry, that he has in any count. Not bashful at all, but as I said in the open, you know, he just he likes to keep the hitters guessing. Keep them off balance, and that's a very, very key. Another key for, uh, for Chris Cody is working so well with his catcher. His catcher is Nick Durba. Nick Durba is the salty uh, young man back there. Plays this game like you ought to play it. Down and dirty and get after guys. Chris Cody comes in as Adrian said 11 and 2. The only two losses of the season against Miami also in this regional. And Fairfield. The two losses. 
There's a look at Nick Jaros to lead things off for the Huskers, the 5'10 junior from Platte City, Missouri. Honorable mention, all Big 12. Really hit well during Big 12 tournament play. 352 on the year. Hit 390 during the conference season. Swings through that offering from Cody. One ball, two strikes. Husker head coach Mike Anderson. Leading these Huskers into their fifth regional in six years. Jaros down one, two. Dead ball. Cody Cap will stay at one, two. Cody tried to work it inside here. Breaking pitch. Trying to get it on the fists of Jaros that time and a little bit too far inside. And the dribbler back to third and foul. There you saw an indication right there. Now, Chris Cody just threw a, a let up pitch as we look at this great crowd here to, today. I tell you, this is just a picture perfect. You know, the old, the old line, Chamber of Commerce Day. <laughs> it's true. It's true right here in the good old Lincoln, Nebraska. A perfect day. And youngsters with even the great old shades. Yeah, I love those shades, young man. We can get a pair of those, right? <laughs> Jarrell sets again, lines that down and out of play. But you see what's happening here. Jarrell's in the last two pitches. He's way out in front. Cody trying to keep him off balance. A couple of change-ups coming his way. And, you know, that ball looks... But well, that ball's coming so slow up there. It looks like a big old melon that you want to reach out and pop it. And uh, so you get a little anxious. You pull the trigger a little too quick. You just uh, yank him down the line there. Jarrell's the grounder to Mark who handles it easily up. And handled it first by Rosati. Marcoux has been struggling this year. 18 errors Still at second base. 878 percentage in the field. Bryce Earlier today, Bimbo. we talked with Kevin Layton, the head coach of Manhattan, about his pitcher, Chris Cody. Chris, you know, he's he's just, just a great pitcher. I mean, he makes the ball miss the bat. He's a tough kid. He goes out there. He competes. Uh, you know, we're expecting him to go deep in the game today and give us a good outing. So. There's a good look at Cody from Brewster, New York. Bryce Nimmo now in there. Nimmo takes ball one. Bryce Nimmo in the lineup. Luke Gorsett still bothered by that bad back. There was some speculation. Would Gorsett make the 25-man roster? Mike Anderson did put him on the 25-man roster, so Gorsett is available, but not likely for regular duty as Nimmo tries to put down the button. Evens a count of one. Yeah, and you're talking about a, a, a big hole in the lineup, Larry, when you're talking about Gorsett going out, a guy hitting at a 350 pace with 15 home runs, leading the team in 48 RBIs. So that's a that's a big chunk out of your lineup. Bryce Demo swings that. Ruiz is there across the diamond for the second out of the bottom of the first. A couple of close plays at first base there. Tough play here for Ruiz, a little bouncer going way to his right. Now batting the and shortstop, number as 10. As you saw, he needed to Ryan go up in the air. Worley. Watch it here again as Nemo just balls up and out, so you hit it to the other way, hit to the other side, and just about gets there. Very, very close, but I believe he did have two close plays at first. So that'll bring up Ryan Worley, the shortstop for the Huskers. Worley hitting 367 on the season from Papillion La Vista. Worley first team all Big 12 this season. That offering is high and outside, even if you count it. Count it 2 and 0 now. Two balls, no strikes on Worley. And that's low. Worley now at 3 0. Interesting to see what he does here. Chris Cody, the left hander. See if he's going to try to continue to pitch around Ryan or not as pitch comes in and it's right down the pipe. Worley taken all the way. Mike Anderson now has given him the green light, it appears, over there at uh, third base and he's ready to hit. Three and one to Worley, the, senior, the uh, sophomore shortstop. That's outside in the corner. 
And he works the count full. Larry, we heard it. Cody was a bulldog. He battled with you. And of course, he's, he's again not going to overpower you, but he's just going to work you to death all around the plate. Paint the corners. Do what he needs to do to get you out. 3 2. And Whirly lines that down the left line. Just foul. And again, way out ahead as Cody pulls the trigger again. Changeup coming in. The thing about it is, you keep in mind now, the Huskers are, are hitting the baseball. So that's the thing. See it again where it's just way out and way out in front of the baseball, but they're hitting the ball. That's key. And that's lifted on the infield. There will be a play. Rosati is there to make it. Three up, three down for the Huskers in the first inning. So through one, no score in this Lincoln Regional between the Jaspers and the Huskers. Did you know the University of Nebraska is a leader in the landscape of computer science and business education? Our J.D. Edwards Honors Program combines business strategy with next generation computer software. That's how you teach leaders for the 21st century. I'd call that thinking outside the box. There is no place like Nebraska. With great privilege comes great responsibility. Most of my generation felt that as younger people and it's time for us to feel that again. There are many ways to get involved in your community. Join thousands by finding which opportunity is best for you. Lead, inspire, change the world again. Call 1-800-424-8867 today or visit www.getinvolved.gov. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. And the road to Omaha for these four teams certainly runs right through Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska. Omaha just 45 minutes down the road from Haymarket Park. There's a good look at the ballpark, the home of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. This Lincoln Regional, not only Nebraska and Manhattan here, but later this evening, third seed San Francisco and number two seed Miami as Jabba Chamberlain offers and hit hard. And he's gone. <laughs> what a shot by Matt Rosati, who welcomes Jabba Chamberlain in the top of the second. Well, that's the thing you, you just want to really stay away from. Jabba, uh, he gave up three home runs in that game down there in the tournament, Larry, and they still managed to escape uh, with a win. But Jabba just put one right there in this uh, in the Rosati's wheelhouse. He had hit eight already this year, Rosati had, making number nine now. And uh, he swings a pretty tough ball bat right there. That ball was right there, belt high. Nothing to do but hit it out, and that's what Rosati did. That'll bring up the other big hitter for Manhattan, Fitzpatrick, and he pounds one to left, going back and looking up, and that is gone. Back-to-back -back home runs by Manhattan in the top of this second inning, Fitzpatrick and Rosati. Well, the old saying in baseball is that hitting is contagious, and in this case, home runs are contagious, as Fitzpatrick, a guy you really expect to do that, he is one of the all-time leading home run hitters. For Manhattan and uh, hit his just hit his 17th home run of the year. And Larry, what this does is you saw the celebration down there with the New York, uh, this New York team, the Manhattan team. It really gives them a little bit of life, not a little bit of life, a lot of life. So that will bring up Dom Lombardi, the third baseman for Manhattan. Just three homers on the year, in case you're wondering. He's from Bronx, New York, and he dribbles that. Mort steps in front of Worley across the diamond in the first out here in the top of the second. Well, interesting that Kevin Layton told us before the game, the head coach of Manhattan, now, that in order to be successful baseman, against Java Chamberlain, you had to jump Ryan on him early Martin. in the count because they knew he would be around the plate. Both of those home run swings coming on the first pitch. You expected that to happen here today. They thought that uh, Jabba would really come fastball, fastball, usually uh, to start out, but uh, and then get after him early, like you said, Larry. But uh, the first inning, Jabba kind of mixed it a little bit, but 
these last two pitcher or hitters Rosati and Fitzpatrick really jumped right on him leaving no doubt when the ball left the bat that it was headed out of here. So that'll bring up the second baseman Ryan Marcou. And Java paints that outside corner once again. One ball two strikes to Marcou hitting 312 on the year. That's lifted high. Back goes Opitz for the second out of the inning. But so Nebraska's had to come from behind, Larry, 16 times this year. Uh, 16 times they've come from behind to win. Now that is so. And again, this is four, early. It's early in the ball game. No reason to panic. No reason to do anything. Just play good, hard baseball. You got. Uh, you'll get your turns. So just don't panic and stay with it. Stay right in the game. And now the shortstop Ruiz at the plate. That line straight back. He attacks first pitch on Java as well. And down 0 1 in the count. Two outs here, top of the second, and back to back home runs by the Jaspers have put them up 2 to nothing in this regional here in Lincoln. Ruiz not in there for his bat, hitting 248 on the year. He is a defensive specialist, is the shortstop. From Miami Southridge. Seven players on this Manhattan squad hail from the Miami area. They have a little pipeline going on. Right back through the middle goes Ruiz, and that's a base hit. Back through the originator. Well hit ball right back through the box. That Jabba could not uh, recover from his motion to now catch the up right to. Fielder, number As Ruiz, just a 248 hitter, as Larry said a moment ago. Gets a base hit here to start. Uh, well, to start it off for him here. A 248 hitter, Larry. You want to you want to try to get those guys. You need to you need to just put them away right now. You don't want them on base. And Ruiz back. Five attempts, four stolen bases for Ruiz on the year. He's at first. There's a look at Nunzio Franzisi. Franzisi swings through that. Franz Acey from Brooklyn, New York. Six foot sophomore. Batting at the bat at the bottom of the order, hitting just 224 on the year. Release at first. Not going. And that pitch outside. So 1 1 to Franz Acey. Matt Atnes still to 95 bases this year. They've created good offense as job is going to check the runner Ruiz over at first, but they've created good offense with respect to the uh, to the base pass slurry 95 out of 119 attempts 80% excellent average. That offering high two balls one strike now. You know the first inning Jabba was pitching uh, well like he was waiting for the old cab as we used to say and uh, with a little urgency now he's kind of. He's kind of got back into a little bit of a slower routine. Franzese pops that high but deep. Under it is Nemo. And Nemo makes the play in center. So that's the third out of the top of the second, but not before Manhattan does damage. Back-to-back -back homers by Rosati and Fitzpatrick. It's 2-0 Jasper. Mom, Dad, this is Kevin. Hi. It's so good to meet you. Hi, Kevin. So any plans today? It's a beautiful day. Why don't you take a hike? No, you take a hike. <laughs> Dad. What? You know, not all Jetta owners love hiking, Craig. Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 66% more likely to go hiking, but there's more to a Volkswagen owner than that. Lose your ignorance at thejettareport.com. For technology to advance as rapidly as it has, Technology education must advance even faster. The University of Nebraska has built an institute that will impress even the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies. Because the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies help design the curriculum. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. 
great day at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska, and just beyond those gates is Hawks Field, home of the Huskers and home of this 2006 regional and the first game of this regional between Nebraska and Manhattan and the Jaspers shocking the home crowd with back-to-back -back homers. There's a look at the dimensions of uh, Haymarket Park. They certainly didn't hold a couple of pitches in just moments ago. 335 and left, 395 in center, 325 in right, the deepest part of this park, 403. And that's in left center field. And at the plate now for the Huskers is Brandon Buckman. Buckman hitting 338 on the year. That's in there for called strike two. Buckman down quickly to Cody, 0 and 2. That's fouled off sharply into the Husker dugout. And Buckman Chris, stays alive. Chris Cody, Larry continues to just he's sneaky out there. You call him crafty. I think every uh, left-handed pitcher I've ever heard referred to is, is a crafty <laughs> lefty, but uh, this guy really is. Buckman has really had a fine year for the Huskers, and he's just going to tap that one back through there, uh, tapping a line drive, but that was kind of an excuse me swing, right? Well, a nice piece of hitting by Buckman to stay alive and just gets the bat on it. And so the Huskers have their first hit of this 2006 oh, regional. Man, Brandon Buckman right on it first to lead off Number the second. Whoops. You know, that's Andrew exactly Brown. the point. You made a great point you make. Just get the bat on it. And, and don't try to drive it. Uh, a lot of times you get a, a guy out there that's thrown in the, in the lower 80s and you just want to, you're anxious. You want to try to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Just get the ball bat on it. Wait on it. You know, if you pull the trigger uh, too soon, obviously we've seen that happen here early. You're going to pull it out of, or, uh, uh, in, in foul territory as the next hitter up here is uh, Andrew Brown and what are the Last half of the season he's happy, but you got to wait on the pitch. The guy that uh, doesn't really zing it up there, you got to wait on that pitch. Well, as you said, Andrew Brown comes into this regional on a roll, hitting 345, 20 for his last 58. Swings hard through that, does Brown. A junior from Carrollton, Texas. Way too much swing for the kind of thing we're talking about right here as Andrew just he unloads it. He's going to get every ounce he can into his swing. But again, with a guy like Chris Cody, you have to cut that swing down just a little bit. Well, that's in the dirt. So now two balls, one strike to Andrew Brown. Raised his season average. He's up to 299. His Big 12 conference average, 351. It's all been as of late for Andrew Brown. And hitting with power, too. The throw over Buckman back easily. Those power numbers, Larry, no surprise in junior college ball. Uh, played two years there, but hit 404 with 18 home runs at junior college. And again, a big cut right there. Too much swing for the pitch. Too much swing for the pitch right now. Measure it out. Make contact, as you said a moment ago. So now Cody has him 2-2. Nobody down. Buckman at first here in the bottom of the second inning. That's inside, missing. <laughs> and loads up the count. Tough one to take. That yeah, really was. Out. You heard the crowd in, in behind us. Talking about uh, or, or groaning about the pitch, a breaking ball that almost ran in there for a strike. Looked pretty good, but the home plate umpire Randy Dillon said, "Nope, not this time." Runs the count full to Andrew Brown, and Brown pops that up just fair, but down the first base line. Will they get to it? And he does. Nice play there by Rosati. Overhand the back of his head. Rosati with a nice grab. So Andrew Brown, the first out of the bottom of the second for the Huskers. Tough play. Not a lot of wind or breeze out here right now, but a great play by Rosati over there uh, going onto the track and then drifting back into the grass and still keeping his eye on the ball and then making the play. That's it's a little bit tougher than it looks, fans, but if the wind was really blown like it normally does here at Haymarket, it's even tougher. And here's a guy who's really turned things around for the Huskers in his last 15 games, hitting 356. Andy Gurch. Gurch lifts that back and out of play. 
Gertsch, Rick and Pius Grad. The top hitter since returning to that lineup. Count even a one. Gertsch looking to step up uh, the postseason as he did last year. He had a great, great postseason uh, tournament, both the regionals and the College World Series last year. Hit 460 in the postseason for the Huskers. Pops this one up, however. High in the infield and back is Mark Koo. He's called off by the right fielder, Franzesi, who is there for the second out at the bottom of the second. Excellent play by Franzesi out there. You. You're going to call those guys off every time you can. Mark Hugh was getting himself in position just in case, but good Good communication, good teamwork by those two players. As Franzese calls him off there at the last second, he's got a much better angle on the fly ball to catch the ball. Franzese does out of right field, and he makes an easy grab. The leader of this Husker squad, Jeff Christie. Named all Big 12 tournament just last week. The throw over. Honorable mention all Big 12 was Christie. Terrific defensive catcher as you look at the 2003 and 2005 Big 12 Coach of the Year, Mike Anderson. Christie lines that foul. As I said before about Christie, uh, Lincoln Southeast product. Uh, he really is kind of an unsung hero last year for sure that was the case and this year he's gotten a little more of his uh, just reward with respect to what he does for this ball club. Uh, Larry he's, he's got a great arm back there he's thrown out 30 percent of the runners trying to steal and uh, handles the pitchers very well. Coaches had enough confidence or so much confidence in him this year that they went and said hey Jeff why don't you call the pitches to get back to that routine so he's doing that and then he's really come on and hit very very well this year. 01. That's down low, 1 1. I say that because you look at his numbers last year. He had just 236, although he had a lot of timely hits. He had just 236, had one home run, had 32 runs driven in. This year, those numbers are up. 296, three home runs, and, or check at 292, eight home runs, and 31 runs driven in. 2 1. That just rides inside on Christie. Mike Anderson called Jeff Christie. One of the top players ever in this program, mm -hmm. given how much he does for the Huskers. Well, again, the hitting, the arm, the defense, handling the pitchers, all of it really has done a terrific job. And that's outside, just outside. Three balls, one strike now to Christie, two down here in the bottom of the second. And good patient eyes as we saw on that last pitch right there. That ball looked like it might have some possibilities as far as the pitch to swing at, but now he held off on it. Buckman at first. And that'll fill it up. Three balls, two strikes to Christian. And Chris Cody just continues to battle. Lots of fluid motion out there with Chris Cody. You know, he started 12 games this year and he's completed, he has eight, eight complete games. <laughs> Incredible. That just happened in the old days. That happened back in my time. <laughs> Buckman off with the pitch, Might but it's struck. lifted high into center. On comes Garcia, who has it for the third out of the bottom of the second. For the so no runs on one hit for the Huskers second. in the bottom of the second, and no score for Nebraska. The Jaspers have two on the board. We'll be back for the top of the third in Lincoln. Hey, guys. Are you hearing this? I'm just bad in your rooms tonight. That's perfect. Perfect song. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think we was being watched by those serious satellites. Oh, hey. It's serious satellite radio. We do not use our satellites to watch you. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like it. Oh, good, because that could make things a little bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Serious, the best radio on radio. Baseball's great. We have a lot of great players. These kids are playing because they love the baseball game. The games take on a playoff type atmosphere. Sliding grab. They're very intense. This college baseball. You can't beat it. Come home to college baseball. Come home to college baseball. 
It's a packed Haymarket Park, and fans from all over the state come here to watch the Huskers on a Friday afternoon. But no one has come as far as Matt Davison's guest. That's right, Larry. I'm down here with Dan Nevins. Dan is from Beacon, New York. And, Dan, you made the trek all the way to Lincoln, Nebraska, and you made the, the trip today. Tell us about your trip. Uh, we, had, we had a good trip. We, we, we uh, First, we flew out of Newark and then to O'Hare Airport in Chicago. We had a little problem there. We had all the hydraulic fluid uh, drain out of the plane, so we got delayed, and, and all, all the parents uh, came, came here to Nebraska. Everybody was a nervous wreck. Uh, they, they, they were worried we weren't going to get here for the start of the game, but you know, United came through for us, and uh, we're here. We're enjoying it here. And this is the this is big time right here, so everybody's excited about being here. Dan, thanks a lot, and hopefully your son, Matt, gets a chance to get in there a little bit later in the game. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I've noticed a lot of different accents around here this week. <laughs> Eric Nieto at the plate. Nieto hitting 257 on the year. Count even to the one and one. Good job of back on top. One ball, two strikes to Nieto. Job Nieto. Working a little uh, quicker out there uh, to start this inning, Larry. Jabba Chamberlain uh, kind of eased it up a little bit back in the second. And now he's jumping back on the track here on the, in the third. As we said, Nieto, one of those players that Nebraska does not want to see on the base paths. And that's just outside, 2-2. 38 stolen bases for Nieto on 42 attempts. Nieto right back to Opitz, scoops it up, flips to Buckman in time, but you see the speed there by Nieto making it a close play. Yeah, usually at second base on ground balls, you've got time. Uh, that ball just a a little tapper out there. Now Patty, the catcher, number take a cut 18, at it, but right off the end of the bat, it's just saying it's just kind of a slow roller over there to second base as Opitz really has to hurry to get the job done. As he knows he's done his homework. Nieto can fly down the bases and he made it a close play, which normally wouldn't be that way. Right? That's popped up. It'll be in foul territory. Three after it. And a nice grab oh. by Buckman. Java slides to his backside. Christie's there, and Buckman throws the glove out at the last moment and brings it in. What a play by Buckman. Great, great play by Buckman. He really saved it and got the out here, but just a mistake by Jabba Chamberlain, quite frankly. As a pitcher, you just stay out there. Stay out there on the mound. Let the catcher and the first the baseman go after those guys. Jabba ends up hitting the dirt. And there's Christie. He's got a beat on it, too. But see, Jabba runs the risk, Larry, of you know what? He runs the risk mm. of getting hurt on doing a play like that. And he did. He, he hit the dirt. He hit the uh, the track there. As the ball's dropped down. Mike Garcia lays down the button. Moore up with it and easily makes the third out of the inning. So in the top of the third, the Jaspers go quietly. 2 nothing. Manhattan on top. This rather unconventional salute to Nebraska's scarlet and cream comes from the cream of 20th century artists, as expressed in the world-famous collection at the Sheldon Memorial Art Gallery on the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. I think you get the picture. There is no place like Nebraska. I'm Landon Donovan of the U.S. Men's National Soccer Team. My goal is to work hard to help the U.S. team win the World Cup this year. But these kids have an even more critical goal. Surviving cancer. Surviving cancer. Surviving cancer. Every five minutes, someone is diagnosed with blood cancer. Every 10 minutes, someone loses the fight. Curing blood cancers like leukemia, which causes more deaths than any other cancer among children under the age of 20, that's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's goal. For more information on how you can help cure blood cancers, leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma, call 1-888-HELP-LLS or visit lls.org. Soccer is about scoring goals. Life is about reaching goals. Help these kids reach theirs. Contact the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society today. 
And we're back for the bottom of the third and to lead things off. Opitz lines it sharply, but right at Garcia in center field for the first out of the top of the or bottom of the third for the Huskers. Talked earlier about, uh, you yeah, know, about hitting it. the ball the right at people. Baseman. They get open. Just two, tattoos three, this one. But four. their uh, center fielder, Mike Garcia, had to move just a couple of paces to his uh, to his uh, left and right to him. But he hit it very, very well. Again, key there. Huskers hitting the ball against uh, Chris Cody. Maybe another time. Uh, well, this is the second time uh, they're seeing the. When we get to the top of the order, obviously it'll be the second time. But right now, Jake Mort, first time he's seeing Chris Cody. But uh, the next two up hitter is Jaros. It'll be that second go round. We'll see what happens for the Huskers then. Mort, the freshman from Nebraska City, hitting 271 on the year. See the head up a little bit right there, and the ball just dropped a good, uh, some sort of sinker pitch by Cody. Tries it again right there, just misses way outside that time. One, two, the count now to Mort. Who really is in there platooning at third base, but plays primarily because of his defense. Very, very steady defensively. Oh. He gets hit there, and that oh. hurt. That sounded like the ball hit the bat. Up here, uh, right off the old elbow, and you can see he's got a sleeve on that elbow already. And we talked to Mike Anderson earlier today about how difficult Chris Cody can be on the mound. Uh, patience and aggressiveness, believe it or not, you got to have now both. Um, you, you've got to hit your pitch, six, and you've got to be patient zero. when he's nibbling around the zone. Uh, but you've got to be aggressive when he comes into the zone, and uh, it's it's quite a balancing act. And our kids are going to have to do that today. He's a very good pitcher, obviously. Um, we know uh, he, we know he's hittable, uh, but we also know that he's unhittable at times too. So, uh, again, patience and aggressiveness. Uh, you got to find that balance, and um, you look for that fastball when he does give it to you, you. You just try to drive it right back up the middle and take what he gives you. And what he gave more was a big bruise on that left. Elbow. He gave him a few B's in the mm. elbows when he gave him. That's that's tough. But he's speaking of tough, Mort's a tough kid. He's ready to go. He's out in Nebraska City, Larry, as you mentioned. They grow him tough down there. So one out for the Huskers here in the bottom of three. Jake Mort at first after being hit by the pitch by Chris Cody. That'll bring up Nick Jaros in the top of the order. Nick grounded out to second first time at the plate. That's in there for a strike. Nice off speed pitch by Cody. He really is a master with uh, the breaking ball and great finesse out there on the mound. Second time now, Jaros is. Quick as the ball uh, bounces over there. Good job, uh, Larry. Mike Rosati knocks her down. Quick flip by Cody. Trying to get Mort sleeping over there at first. Mort, nine stolen bases this season on 12 attempts. And Jarrow swings through that offering by Cody. No balls, two strikes now. Take a look at the get on the swing there. A little too much swing and breaking pitch just drops, drops down a little bit there. Curve ball from Cody is another check over to the first baseman, uh, Rosati and Mort. Cody named first team Mac and all tournament team and pitcher of the year and that's why right there he gets Jaros chasing. First strikeout for Chris Cody here today and. You know the Huskers again uh, Mike now, Anderson uh, talked about fielder, patience and aggressive uh, trying to combine patience Ron and aggressiveness Simo. and then you see being a little too aggressive maybe guessing he, he, he likes to get hitters guessing that's what's happening here right now. Hitters are guessing I think uh, Jaros guessing on that last pitch thinking the ball was going to. Some sort of uh, old fastball outside corner, whatnot, wasn't breaking pitch outside. He went for it, no chance at all to get that base hit. So that brings up the center fielder, Bryce Nimmo. Nimmo has been struggling mighty. Lee in these last couple of weeks. 
big breaking curveball coming in again. I, I, every inning that goes by, you get more impressed with Chris Cody, and you know, you know, and you understand why he had such good success this year for the Jaspers. Newark back at first. Nimmo's average just under a month ago was at 360. And he's now at 266. I guess when it goes bad, it goes bad. Mm. Huh? Wow. 100 points dropping down. Snap date. An 0 for 22 skid against Texas. And he had a bunch single. He's such a quality ball player. And Nemo swings through that offering. One ball, two strikes. I think we're going to sound like a broken record mm. up here uh, for the for the better be be part of this ball game. This, you see the breaking pitch to the uh, left-handed hitting Nemo from the left-handed pitching uh, Chris Cody. Big sweeping curveball coming in and thinking about a uh, oh about a, a, a two to seven uh, trajectory there, a two o'clock to seven o'clock uh, line. And Nemo not able to catch up to it. Had a great look at the fans out in the berm. Must be about 2,500 in the berm on a great afternoon. Mort's going and comes inside, and Nemo is hit. Second hit by pitch of this inning. And Chris Cody's going to complain about Nemo being all over the top of the plate, but that was way yeah. inside. Right, way inside, and uh, Nemo definitely trying to, to get out of the way. See Kevin Layton. See, he's he's trying to get out. he's trying to get out of the way that to, on that pitch, but no chance at all. So the Huskers now, now mounting a threat here. Number two. There are two out in the inning here, Larry, but uh, they have runners out there. They have a runner in scoring position, and Worley's got to have up there with runners in scoring position. Worley hitting 367 on the year. First team All Big 12. First team all conference, all tournament. And Bryce Nimmo's going to have that looked at. He's looking for something from the trainer. Both Mort and Nimmo on after being hit by pitches. And he's going to have that hand looked at. Check of the hand out. Trainer coming out to make sure he's okay. Worley up at the plate with runners in scoring position this year, hitting 387. So he is one of the Husker players having good success with runners out in the bags to bring him home. He's one of those guys you want at the plate with this situation. And Worley, remember, although just a sophomore, is draft eligible this year. Draft coming up on June 6th, and he was listed in just this week's Baseball America as the 117th best prospect in the nation. So Worley will have some decisions to make at the end of the season. Runners at first and second. The offering to Worley down low. Ball one. Well, he popped up last time to the first baseman, Rosati. And I'll guarantee you, Larry, he's looking for a, one to drive here now. He's going to maybe be a little more patient up here at the plate with a ball bat. Look it over well. Yep. The patience there. So Chris Cody finding himself in his first trouble of the afternoon here in the bottom of the third inning. Runner in scoring position for the first time today for the Huskers. Jake Mort at second, hit by pitch. Bryce Nemo at first, also hit by a pitch. Ryan Worley. The Huskers' top average hitter at the plate. That's fouled back. That indeed was a pitch to hit. He was ready to go, pull the trigger. Guessing that pitch was going to be there. It was, but just barely missed it. Well timed on the swing, but just got under just a little bit. Runs the count out two and one. That's low and inside. Three one to Worley. Now it needs to be extremely patient. Three and one count. His count. He shortens up on the bat. That's good to see. He was down at the end up until now. And he's shortened on the bat. And he's going to play slap ball if he can. Just put the ball in play. Mm. Worley thought it was low. 
Called strike two. Full count now. 3-2 to Worley. Take another look here. And that yeah, looks pretty good. It, it, in the zone, I think it crossed where it needed to be in the strike zone. Catcher caught it down the, below the knee, but I think when it crossed the zone, it probably probably was there. Three two full count Cody to Worley. The runners going and Worley strikes out for the Huskers. In the so Cody comes the through in the bottom of the third with a runner in scoring no position. He gets the strikeout of the Huskers. Still nothing on the board through three. Dollars of people lately. Introducing Power Bar Triple Threat. It fuels like a power bar and tastes like a candy bar. One bite and you'll feel like you can take on anything. Be great. Exactly what to play. Rachel, look out! At Sirius Satellite Radio, we do not use our satellites to know exactly what to play. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like. Oh, well, I was just gonna say that. It's like we're reading your mind? Nah. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. The capital in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Huskers are taking on Manhattan in this NCAA regional. Miami and San Francisco to do battle later tonight here in Lincoln. Well, here's a look at the final Big 12 Conference standings, and as you can see, Nebraska with that late season plummet fell to fourth. The good news for the Big 12 Conference, seven Big, Big 12 teams the make the postseason. Baseman, seven in the regionals. Texas, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Baylor, Kansas, and Missouri all made it. Here's a look at the MAC Conference standings. Manhattan finishing second behind Lemoyne, but they get the automatic berth into regionals because they win the postseason conference tournament. Manhattan beating Lemoyne in that final game, 7-2. to two. Now, Jabba Chamberlain back to face Rosati. Took him deep in the second. And now to take us through the middle innings, Adrian Fiala. Hey. Thank you, Larry. Boy, great to be with you here today. Great to be with all the fans and Got a, a baseball game that's brewing right here as Manhattan has taken a two run lead here. Two to nothing. They lead the Oscars here in the top of the fourth inning. Mike Rosati is the hitter. John Fitzpatrick and Dom Lombardi do up after Rosati. Rosati from Floral Park, New York, played for Malloy High School. He fouls that one off to our left. Rosati steps in today, hitting 349. He had that home run in the second inning, his ninth home run of the year. He's driven in 42. Also leads the team in hits with 66 and 55 runs scored. So complete ball player Mike or Matt Rosati that is. Rosati last year fans hit 416 on the year. 416 incredible. He has run the count now 3 2 Jabba Chamberlain on the mound for the Huskers. Working hard at 6 3 225. A Lincoln Northeast High School product as he lets one up there. Good, good let up pitch by Jabba as it goes to second baseman over there. Offense over to Buckman, and the first out is recorded. Earlier today, head coach Kevin Layton had this to say about uh, John Fitzpatrick, their the power hitter. hitter number 11, Johnny's been a, John a big part of our success uh, down the stretch here. He's just been phenomenal with the bat. Uh, you know, I hope it continues. Uh, if it does, he, you know, he's a guy that. Uh, He'll have an impact on today's games. Well, you heard him say phenomenal with the bat. He goes after this first pitch this time. Last time he did it, he popped a home run in the left center field. And before you can say home run left center field, he now pops a base hit in the right field. Here it is again. This takes it the opposite way. The pitch outside and Fitzpatrick going with it into right field. He is hitting 579 in his last 10 games. That is on fire. Yeah, their team has responded well to that, too, Larry. Uh, you know, they're, they're in the last 15 games where he's hit so well, they're 12 and 3. So his hot bat coming along, uh, they have six players that are hitting extremely well here late in the season. That's the key to the postseason. Get hot at the right time. They have, they're in the tournament. Hitter is Lombardi. 
I didn't get a chance to see it. Did you, Larry? If, if it runs down to the football line or not? <laughs> <laughs> if so, Vince would be proud. Dom Lombardi steps in. Steps in today, hitting 324, three home runs, 29 runs driven in. He grounded out his last time up. He takes this one up high from Jabba. Runs the count now, two and one. Jabba Chamberlain. Jabba will run it up there about 98, 97. Uh, he'll top out at that. Normally going to be in that. Oh, 89 to 94, 95 range. Two seam fastball, four seam fastball. Curve change up and slider. The slider works well for him. Two and on the way, and it's in there for a call strike. Breaking pitch up. It drops right in there for strike two. Matt had two runs, four hits on the day. They haven't committed any errors. And Jabba tries to come fastball down low. So full count now to Dom Lombardi. Leads this team with 18 doubles. Lombardi from the Bronx. Played at St. Raymond High School. He's had a hot bat of late hitting 372 in his last 10 games. 32 on the way. And just misses and Jabba walks Lombardi. First walk given up by Chamberlain today. Now Runner now out at second base. Baseman. That's John Fitzpatrick. Number He's in scoring position, obviously. Ryan and Ryan Marcu will step in. Sophomore out of New Milford, Connecticut. He is again one of those hot bat hitters that Manhattan brought here to Lincoln. Hitting 333 in the last 10 games. More importantly, he's driven in 11 runs in those last 10 games. And they have job of working much more quickly than he yeah. was in the second inning and even in the third. Yeah, he, he pitches better when he pitches with urgency in my eyes. First inning he, he hustled, uh, uh, you know, he got the ball back, said let's go, and there's a like a slider coming right in. But uh, he's a very he, up-tempo guy. He and Brett, Brett Jensen's the same mm -hmm. way, uh, Nebraska's closer. They've got to pitch in, in fast rhythm to be effective, and Jabba's that way, and he's, he pitches with emotion. I, I just love the way he pitches. He's my kind of guy. It's the cat now is one and one to Marku. All inside. Ryan Marku. He settled the issue at second base for Manhattan in the first 32 games this year. They tried four different starters. Didn't have a whole lot of success there. They were 17 and 15 in those first 32 games. As Jabba's ready to fire up, and there's a pitch on the outside corner. Marku does not like it. Runs the count in two and two, but. Marku then took over at second. Here it is again. Hmm. On the black, let's call it. <laughs> but since Marku took over at second base, the team is 15 and 16. And Marku hitting well, raising his average as Jabba tries to get Marku on a breaking pitch outside, just misses. So the count now is full, three and two, with one out here. Well, in a good spot with the 2 2 count for Jabba. Just didn't get the call there. Mike Cole, the third base coach, uh, handed out some signals over there. I don't know that they'll start up. Christie's got the good arm. Fitzpatrick out at sec second base. Yep, strike three. Jabba Chamberlain records his third strikeout. And Larry, it couldn't come at a better time. Well, runners scoring position, and Jabba was, looked like he was starting to get a bit frustrated with a couple of calls, and he gets, gets him going just a that is a close call. I tried to hold it up, but they said he went. Well played up higher is Randy Doolin today. And he's given the wide strike. The thing about that is, if you know that, you got to cover for it, protect for it. As two are out now here for Manhattan in this inning. And a pickoff throw just about gets Fitzpatrick out there at second. Good sneak play, a little daylight play back there by Ryan Worley, the Husker shortstop. And a lot of times it's a value of great catcher who sees what's going on behind him and can make that call because that was obviously called really just sneaking behind him nearly nearly got him. Rene Ruiz the hitter single his last time up 248 hitter on the year. He came up uh, his first time up in the second inning and promptly singled on into right field Ruiz from Miami played at Miami Southridge and then played. Junior college ball never caught up to that one at uh, Florida Gulf Coast. 
as Jabba working hard here. 0 and 2 now to Ruiz. Yeah, this is the same Jabba we saw in the first inning, Adrian, when he was getting the ball, moving quickly, looked confident, locating his pitches. I think those two back to back home runs rattled him just momentarily in that third. Pitch just misses. You're right, Larry. You know, what you do as a pitcher is you just take hitters out of rhythm. And hitters have rhythm, just like pitchers have rhythm. And if, if I know a pitcher's got that kind of rhythm, I'm going to step out and make him wait. But uh, Jabba, just in that second inning, really kind of backed off a little bit. He misses badly outside this time. So two balls, two strikes, and two outs now on the hitter. Two and two on Ruiz and two outs on the Manhattan Jaspers. Jabba stares in. Jeff Christie is the Husker catcher. Flashes a set of signals with a runner on second base. Alternate numbers back there. And misses badly again outside. So missed three times outside. You got to you got to figure, Larry. He's, mm. he's got to come in. And Ruiz knows that. When you see Jabba now taking his time out there, kicking the dirt, moving around. When he does that, he knows he's still looking for something. When he's getting the ball on the mound, up tempo and quick, he's in a rhythm right there. Took his time, kicked the dirt around. Now he's set. He's still fishing a little bit. 3 2 on the way, and Ruiz fouls it right up over the press box here. Runners on the move. Fitzpatrick making his break, and Lombardi making his break at first. Manhattan College. In the Bronx. Actually, they say it's in Riverdale, which is in the Bronx. College founded in 1853. They've been playing baseball for 137 years. It's a long time, my friend. It's older than your car. <laughs> the first time they've been in a regional, 1957. Great to see it happen. Count is 3 2 on Rene Ruiz. Two outs here. Again, runners will fire up as soon as Jabba makes his motion home. Pitch is gone, and there's a ground ball to the third baseman, Mort. Fires over the Buckman, and that'll end it. So Jabba, Chamberlain, and the Huskers avoid a big problem here in the fourth inning. That end leads it 2 to nothing. Back with more college baseball right after this. Hey, guys. Are you hearing this? I just died in your rooms tonight. That's perfect. Perfect song. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think we was being watched by those serious satellites. Oh, hey. It's Sirius Satellite Radio. We do not use our satellites to watch you. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like it. Oh, good, because that could make things a little bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. Hey. Hey. Maybe you can give me a call sometime? Yeah, I would love that. Show me the downward facing dog. I'm, I'm sorry, what? You know, because all you guys know how to do yoga. You guys. Look, not all Jetta owners know yoga. I'm... And you got the foot in the mouth position, right? Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 115% more likely to enjoy yoga, but don't assume they all do. Lose your ignorance at thejettareport.com. And welcome back to Hawks Field here at Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Adrian Fiala with Larry Putney. And you see a great shot. That's the view we have from the press box here of Memorial Stadium. The site of a number of historic uh, ball games here in good old Lincoln, Nebraska. Well known for the football program and now well known for the Husker baseball program. Larry? Glad yeah, Adrian would like to walk everyone across the nation watching on college sports television. And of course, all the Nebraska viewers in every community across the state on NET and NETHD. We're happy to have college sports television as our national partner on all of NET's baseball and softball coverage this season. NET is Nebraska's only statewide television network, and that's why we say NET is Nebraska's home for sports. Great to have you with us, uh, all of our viewers all across the land. Brandon Bachman rifles one back to the middle. His second hit of the day. As the Huskers get the leadoff hitter on here, Brandon Buckman here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Buckman two for two on the day. Well, the Huskers have two hits and both of them coming off the bat of Buckman, and he just sits on this one right back through the middle. Great piece of hitting. You see, Buckman is a little awkward at the plate. He doesn't have the most fluid swing all the time, but what he does well is he puts bat on ball. Exactly, and uh, you know he worked on his mechanics uh, this year, really increased his power numbers. He has 14 home runs. This year had just two last year as Andrew Brown speaking of home runs this guy can put you well he can tie this ball game up real quick with one swing of the bat but he's got to measure the swing last time up uh, he was just 
over swinging, uh, uh, just really over swinging way, way too much, Larry. So measure the swing, get your pitch, and be patient at the plate. He's got one ball on him as Cody comes in again. It's a curveball, just breaking pitch, beautiful pitch. Evens count at one and one. Brown from Carrollton, Texas. Yeah, he's being much more patient at the plate. You saw he taking a look at a couple of pitches. First time up, he was really swinging through, and those changeups sometimes coming in there at eye level before they drop can look very big. And he was swinging through those early, but a little more patient at the pay, at the plate this time. Yeah, you need it as we talked about uh, a couple of times as, as uh, head coach Mike Anderson reiterated. Uh, you've got to have that against a guy like Chris Cody. He can drive you nuts. I mm. playing a game of baseball, you know. I, I'd rather hit a guy or hit against a guy going 90 than a guy going 83 and with good command, good stuff. The ability as that pitch is uh, outside for a ball with the ability, Larry, to put the ball where he wants to. One of the best pitchers I ever caught was a guy by the name of Dwight Siebler, and he probably didn't go much more than 82, 83 ever. But man, wherever I put the glove, that's where the ball was. Well, that 82 mile an hour seems so much faster when he backs it up with a 72 mile an hour changeup. It's just on top. It's sneaky fast. Again, and, and, and again, if he can control, if he can, uh, if he has great command, which he does, or which mm -hmm. he's shown throughout his career, uh, yeah, it's it's extremely tough to hit a guy like Chris Cody. We've seen him, uh, you know, his number is simply incredible uh, throughout the year in his career. 28 wins in his career, 288 strikeouts, 18 complete games. Amazing. The only blemish on that was that game against Miami, which is, yeah. of course, the Hurricanes also in this regional. He went five innings that day, gave up nine hits, nine runs. Six of those were earned. Had a couple of dribblers, he said, get through the infield. There was an error early on, got down three to nothing, started to press, and Miami really took advantage. But when he gets into a game, has a chance to settle down, he has such great command and keeps these hitters so off balance that he's very effective. Well, Brown has run the count two and two. Line drive, left field, and again, advance the runners. Andrew Brown measures the swing. Exercises the patience, gets a base hit. Well, as you said, Adrian, these guys are starting to see him a second time through. So they're going to be a little more used to what he's trying to do. That slides in on him, and now batting Brown just Denson goes with it, takes it. Hitter, and uh, that's 12, what I always, when I see a, a situation Gerd. like that, a hit like that, I always say, thank goodness for aluminum bats, because mm. that ball, that bat ball is hit fist. right off the fist. Mm -hmm. A wooden bat, that bat's broken right now, and uh, probably an out. But... Uh, Brown comes through, base hit. First two uh, hitters here have come up. Andy Gertz will step in now. Andy comes in today hitting 296, three home runs, 17 runs driven in. And uh, Andy is an honorable mention, all Big 12 player this year. Missed 11 games this year because of injury and, and the unfortunate death of his father. He drops this one down. The pitcher, Chris Cody, wanted to go to third base, Ooh. but the third baseman, uh, Dom Lombardi, had come in on the play. And you want to make him feel the ball short. You want to try to get the ball down that third baseline to make that third baseman feel it so you ensure the advance of the runner. But Gertz gets it done now with the sacrifice the butt. Catcher. And the, the runners advance. Yeah, Buckman down Christie. at third now and Brown down at second. So Gertz with the sacrifice and Jeff Christie. Now, Larry, this is a situation that Jeff likes. Absolutely. He is key in clutch situations. Mike Anderson has talked about it time and again. This is what he does for this team is when there are runners in scoring position, Jeff Christie loves to be in this position. He has the opportunity right now, Jeff Christie, to really help his ball club out. We'll see if that happens here. Christie, the Husker catcher, looks at the first pitch down low, ball one. Christie came in today hitting 292 with eight home runs and 31 runs driven in. Christie last year, one home run, same number. Well, I beg your pardon. One more run driven in at 32, but hit just 236. But he really got timely hits as evidenced by that RBI number. As that pitch is outside, so the patient eye of Jeff Christie is wearing on their pitcher, Chris Cody. We've seen Christie take a couple right out there. He has such a good eye, does uh, Christie. He sees a lot of pitches back there. Very disciplined. That's a couple right on the edge there that he's laid off of. 2 0 is the count. Christie will make sure this pitch is in his zone, and there's a curveball. We talked earlier in the broadcast, or the telecast, that is, about any pitch in any count. You saw a curveball 2 0. That is savvy. That is competition. That's a guy who knows how to pitch. 2 and 1 now is the count to Jeff Christie.
Went after a bad one. Could be three and one now, but it's actually two and two is the actual count as Jeff may be guessing a little bit, Larry. Well, this was up, but Kristen saw it. And that's that uh, sneaky fastball probably coming in there about 83. But when you're used to seeing the change and the breaking stuff coming in there a little slower, that gets on top of you pretty quickly. I think he was he was guessing fastball. He saw fastball and the ball was up a little bit. The ball really was would have been a ball, but still life there. Two balls and two strikes with one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Manhattan leads it two to nothing. Christie steps out. Christie. Really worked in the weight room uh, in the offseason needed to get stronger. He is he's is very very durable. 54 games he's played in this year 50 starts. And he was named Husker lifter of the year. For his efforts in the weight room as that ball gets down great job by Nick Durbo. The Manhattan catcher. To knock that ball down. You can tell the catchers. It looked like they've been rolling in the dirt for a week and a half. Well, this is just what you expect. Runner on third, you expect this out of your catcher. It's down in the dirt, and he's going to make sure that it goes nowhere but right in front of him. Uses the chest protector, cups that chest in, kicks those hands out, keeps it in front of him. Count is full on Jeff Christie. There's one out. There is an open base. New up hitter is Jake Opitz. 3 2 on the way, and fly ball into the center field. Should score a run. Center fielder has it measured. That's Garcia. Here comes the throw. Runner is coming home, Buckman, and he is in there on the sacrifice fly by Jeff Christie. He got it done. He much rather uh, would have preferred a base hit, but he got it done, all right? Well, he just lifted that to center. I thought Garcia would have a little better play on the at the plate there, but now batting the it was cut by the first baseman, Rosati. Take one more look, and Buckman just sliding the outside. No throw getting through. And Rosati, of course, cut the throw by Garcia. Andrew Brown still out at second base. They cut the ball down. Andrew uh, did not want to take a chance on getting erased at third base on some sort of play in the middle of the infield. So he is out at second base. He can still score. Base hit will score him as Opitz steps in. Opitz a line drive last uh, time to center field as he looks at a beautiful curveball coming in. Strike one. Two to one now is our score. Opitz trying to tie it up. Opitz from Littleton, Colorado, played at Heritage High School for John Quarton there. Last year hit 250 for the Huskers. Comes in today hitting 294. Big hopping ground ball. Tough play. The shortstop over there is Ruiz. Fires and gets Opitz standing the here. Huskers so the Huskers the do ball. indeed the pick up a run. Game. Manhattan one two, run Nebraska on one will be more with college baseball right after this. Did you know the University of Nebraska is a leader in the landscape of computer science and business education? Our J.D. Edwards Honors Program combines business strategy with next generation computer software. That's how you teach leaders for the 21st century. I'd call that thinking outside the box. There is no place like Nebraska. Athletes have gone pro in something other than sports. And please be with Dad as he is not with us to share this great meal. I can't explain to you how difficult it is. Eat your dinner. My husband deployed on September 12th. He's not going to come back till he's done with his mission. If Dad was here, you would not be acting like that. So it's been hard not having him because it has sort of taken away the tradition of our family. There are ways you can help ease the stress of our military families. Please visit the website on your screen and do what you can. Welcome back to Hawks Field here, Haymarket Park in Lincoln, Nebraska, with Matt Davison down on the sideline, Larry Putney here to my left. I'm Adrian Thiel. Great to have you with us here today. A beautiful baseball day here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Manhattan leads it here in the top of the fifth inning, two to one, and their first hitter up is Nunzio Franzesi. 
Last time up, he fly deep to center field. Franzese from Brooklyn. Sophomore, six foot, 180 pounds, and looks at strike two from Jabba Chamberlain on the hill for the Huskers. O2. Jabba waste one to the outside. One ball, two strikes. Now to Franzese. Jabba continuing to work that outside corner. Came right at him that time, drilled it. Man, that was Franzese. Uh, he hit that ball over, uh, drilled it over to the right hand side, but it was he jammed on it. And I'm not sure how he got it over there, but he did. <laughs> Tough to do that as the ball is up high now. So the count now to Franzese, two and two. Nunzio in today at 224 on the average. He runs the bases well, 14 stolen bases, and he lines one foul down the left field line. He'll adjust everything, get back, and try to do it again. Nice change of pace there by Java. Franzese, a career 242 hitter, as he gets this one into center field. And Demo gives Jason, has it put away for out number one. Earlier today, we talked with uh, Coach Layton about this hitter right here, Eric Nieto. Now batting the left fielder, number 21. Eric's, yeah, he's, Eric he's our little spark Nieto. plug. When he gets on base, uh, he can turn a single into a double and even a triple real quick. Uh, he's just a great base runner. He knows how to steal a base. Uh, he's very aggressive out there. So hopefully, you know, he can get on base and, and get us moving. Uh, you know, speed is, a thing, is something that you know, never takes a day off. So. He's our guy that, uh, that we like to use in, in those situations. So, well, Nieto, Nieto has popped it up, and just it isn't fair territory. And three players converge: Worley, Brown, and Buckman over there. Or check it, Opitz, Brown, and Buckman, and we'll see the catch again here. Opitz is going to finally catch up. No, he will not. As Brown calls everybody off again, Larry, as as he should. Oh, you saw Buckman trying to backpedal and. No drop step there. He was just backpedaling straight back and got caught up on his cleats and went backside. It was a good thing Brown was there. Brown's ball, obviously. It's a big out for the Huskers, however. You want to keep him off the bases. The next hitter is Nick Durba, and he takes a pitch in there for a call strike. You want to keep Nieto off because he will hurt you whenever he gets on base. He likes to go. He likes to run. He's 0 for 3 on today. So Jabba Chamberlain, the Huskers, doing a good job to keep him off the base passes. Derba takes the next pitch in ball one. Derba, the catcher from College Point, New York. 5'10, 180 pounds. First team all Mac. Second time he has earned those honors uh, for his university. He's a lot like Jeff Christie, Aiden, that he's really the heart and soul of this Manhattan squad. I mean, he's a one of those tough kids from New York. He, he plays the part, he acts the part. He leads this team by example on and off the field. He's just a tough kid you want behind the plate, the kind of leader that all, all teams really need to be successful. Absolutely, Larry. An excellent catcher back there, handles the pitchers well, well defensively. His numbers aren't great in terms of throwing people out, but what is, is significant is he picks off people. He picked off 10 last year. He's picked off eight this year. A career 296 hitter. For the Jaspers, 15 home runs, and there's a big swing and a miss. Strike Four three, so Java retires the side here no in the top of the fifth no inning. Hands. Jaspers go down. No Jaspers lead it two to one. More regional baseball right after this. Yeah, so I'm taking Katie out dancing this weekend. You think you could teach me some moves? What? Yeah. Everybody knows you guys know how to dance, right? You guys. You mean all us Jetta guys, right? I thought you were my friend. Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 57% more likely to go dancing, but that doesn't mean they're all dancers. Lose your ignorance at thejettareport.com. Rachel, Rachel, please. Baby, can, we, can we please just talk about this? All the whites. Perfect. It's like Sirius uses their satellites to figure out exactly what to play. Rachel, look out! At Sirius Satellite Radio, we do not use our satellites to know exactly what to play. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like... Oh, well, I was just going to say that... Like we're reading your mind? Nah. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. 
2 to 1 is our score here at Hawks Field, Haymarket Park. Right here in Lincoln in the Lincoln Regional. Manhattan two runs, four hits, no errors. Nebraska one run, three hits, and they have been airless also. Chris Cody on the mound for the Jaspers and due up for Nebraska, Jake Mort, number nine hitter, and then Nick Jaros and Bryce Nimmo. So very competitive ball game right now is Chris Cody. That young man right there has stepped in. We heard a lot about him. Our first time to see Chris Cody, obviously, but he is really Performed well, given up just three hits to the Huskers. They tagged him for a run in the last inning. Brandon Buckman singled, Andrew Brown singled, and Buckman then came home on the sacrifice fly by Jeff Christie. First pitch in is down low to Jake Mort, the Husker third baseman. He got hit last time up, hit by the pitch. Comes in today hitting 271. He has not hit a home run this year. He's driven in 24. Pitch on the outside corner in there for a call strike. Jake really was a surprise this year for Nebraska. They, you know, hoped that uh, they would find someone to fill in at third. Well, they had, of course, the injury early. Gordon's gone. They need somebody to step up at third, and he really has been a big defensive help there at third, and that's going to go just foul. <laughs> He hit this one a ton, fans. I want to tell you, he hit it a ton. But again, as we've said numerous times today, Oscar hitters a little bit out front, and he was indeed a little bit out front on that play. Mort, the 5'11 redshirt freshman, 170 pounds, out of Nebraska City, played for Tom Bates down there. Great career in high school, two-time All-Nebraska player, and a four-time All-Stater. A lot of people wonder what you know. What is the difference between Mort and Edelson at third, and really? Not much more just a little more consistent at third base defensively went after a bad pitch there is Chris Cody breaking pitch as we talked about here it is again you see more just chasing nice pitch once again by Cody Cody records his third strikeout on the afternoon Mort goes down brings up the top of the order Nick Jaros will step in Nick from Platte City Missouri Played at Platte City High School and again ahead of that one also. And also, uh, Gerald Maplewood Community College. Junior 5'10, 200 pounds. Oh, one on the way. It'll be two strikes now to Jake Moore. Well, you said earlier it would sound like a broken record, but there it was again. Way out ahead. You just a lot of times, Larry. What I used to do when we had a pitcher like Cody is just widen the stance up. I mean, you, you, you've got to wait. Then you can't you can't jump at a pitch. Your stance is wider, and there he just tries to tap it. He does tap it out to the second baseman, Marku, and he is up with it. We're out number two here in the fifth. Well, we'd like to hear from everyone watching the 2006 NCAA baseball regionals here on NET and CSTV. Let us know where you're watching, and if you're enjoying our coverage, you can write us at NET Sports, P.O. Box 83111, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68501, or email us at sports at netnebraska.org. Take a moment now and let us hear from you, and tell us if you're enjoying these regionals right here on NET and CSTV. Bryce Nemo steps in now, the Husker center fielder. And looks at the first pitch up tall from Cody. Ball one. Nemo, 0 for 1 on the day, hit by a pitch in the third. Larry told you earlier, average really has plummeted since earlier on in the year, down 100 points. Hitting at a 266 clip right now with three homers and 21 run, 21 runs that is driven in. Well, Aiden, and what ails Bryce is not good with a pitcher like Chris Cody because he really has been getting out in front early. Hasn't been sitting back, hasn't been staying back. And a pitcher like Cody is just going to make that seem even more difficult for you. You're going to be even more out in front of him. Yeah, and obviously he's anxious to hit too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's had this slump, an over 22 slump as you talked about earlier. Uh, came back against Texas and got a base hit in the tournament. Just uh, one hit at six at bats in the tournament, but uh, he's just anxious to hit. Larry, and when you're that way, as that mm -hmm. ball sails inside, 
Three balls and a strike. Well, the other thing that ails, the other thing that ails Nimmo is, you know, Nebraska's had a lot of injuries in the outfield. And Gorsett obviously not playing today with his back injury. Brown was hurt injury uh, earlier, and Nimmo has really stepped in and filled a lot of those roles. And they tell you in the major leagues they, that the one thing you want to do in baseball is take care of your legs. Yep. And he just played so much, and his legs really started to wear out on him in a little bit. And, he thinks he's finally starting to get those back underneath him here in the last week, week and a half now when he hasn't been playing as much. Now Nimmo draws the walk, first walk Ryan given up by Cody Woodley. here today. He's hit two batters, issued three passes then, uh, three free passes to the Huskers as Nimmo takes his place down at first base. And that'll bring up Ryan Worley. 0 for 2 on the day, and I guess you'd have to say fans, knowing Ryan Worley as we do, that he is definitely due for a base hit or something to happen here with the ball bat. Huskers top hitter on the year 367 with eight home runs and 48 runs driven in Ryan Worley. Excellent at shortstop. Has really caught the eye of Major League Baseball youngster from Papillion Nebraska. When we talked about he is draft eligible eligible as a third year sophomore he redshirted and once you've been at a school college university for three years you do become draft eligible and he is. A lot of people like his size, like his range at shortstop, and really like his bat. Well, his bat has really come on this year, Larry. 367, as we said earlier last year, hit just 275. Did not have a home run last year and drove in 25 last year. Those numbers considerably up this year. Eight, eight dingers, 48 runs driven in, 367 for the average. Leads the team. Uh, in batting average and runs and hits and also leads the team with runners in scoring positions. So he has really just uh, had, a, had a great, great year. First team all Big 12 at shortstop. Well, you take a look at a couple of the other draft eligible Huskers in Java Chamberlain and Tony Watson. And, you know, they will be drafted high enough that it probably is going to make sense for both of those to take a look, a serious hard look at what to do. Worley, one of those guys who would benefit by coming back another year. He needs another year in the program, another year of of being a little more mature, being a leader, not being so quiet. And his projection, I think, at, at 117th, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens there. You know, sometimes you get a surprise in, in that regard. But, you know, 117th, yeah, that's that's nice. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's gonna it's a function of economics, as we know. Runner going, and Ryan Worley strikes out. 0 for 3 on the day, his second strikeout on the day. And the Jaspers preserve the lead here. They lead it two to one back to Haymarket Park right after this. The odds of a child being in a fatal automobile accident are one in 23,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit AutismSpeaks.org. Man, what's kind of the people lately? Introducing Power Bar Triple Threat. It fuels like a power bar and tastes like a candy bar. One bite and you'll feel like you can take on anything. Be great. Welcome back to the Lincoln and Regional here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Manhattan leads it two to one. And let's go down to Matt Davison. Matt has a special guest. Matt. Hey, Adrian, as you're up there enjoying the, the <laughs> air conditioning, I'm out here on the burn, but it is comfortable. I'm here with Edward Venter, and he came in from Kearney this morning. You got here about 8 o'clock this morning to get your ticket at Will Call. Is that right? Yep. And uh, was there a big line? How, you come to a lot of the games? Oh, I try to get to as many as I can. It's kind of hard to, to drive and all, but yeah. Kind of a diehard Nebraskan sit out here in the in the berm and enjoy the game today. Oh yes. What do you think is going to happen? Two to one right here. What do we have to do to, to take the lead? Oh, they need to not be striking out so much. But yeah, it'll. Just need a couple clutch hits. That's about it. Guys, there's a lot of people hanging out out here. Big time Nebraska fans just hanging out on the berm waiting for a home run ball from one of the Huskers. Thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, pretty casual out there as as Nick Garcia or check it, Mike Garcia steps in. 
Somebody's yeah. got to run that advice into Mike. Just, <laughs> guys, don't strike out so much. That's a pretty good thing to yes. do in baseball, isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad advice at all. Well, as I said to one of the keys of the game here, battle and score, battle and score. And the Huskers, mm -hmm. you know, against uh, that ball down low and in the dirt. Uh, you know, against Baylor, they left 25 men on base in that series, Larry, and they did not have very good success in that series. So far through five innings, they've left five on here today. So, battle and score. Get them in on base, bring them home. You got to do that. And the Oscars normally put it pretty good at getting that job done, but as I call them, the LOBs, the left on base, really can snap up and bite you. And we've seen that happen to Nebraska. The count is two and two to Garcia. And he swings at a pitch down in the dirt. Christy up with it, steps out front. Nice work by Jeff. And the out is recorded. The fifth strikeout and an assist to Christy. The first baseman, number 24, Matt Rosati. Matt Rosati will step in. Matt on the day is one for two. One big one, a home run. Solo shot in the second. From the big guy, 6'6, 230 pounds. And we were watching him, Rosati, yesterday in batting practice, and then again in batting practice before the game. Yesterday, he took about three off of the scoreboard in right field, and then today in batting practice pregame, he took another one off the scoreboard. Yeah. He was just launching. And I mean, you look at the size of this guy 6'6, 230, just but, an enormous swing. And, and Larry, but look at him, too. I mean, mm. he doesn't look, I mean, there's not an ounce of anything, but. But uh, but power and muscle in that frame as job has worked him over here and he throws a let up pitch there a change up runs a count to one ball and two strikes Rosati what I like about him a great deal in addition to his numbers here mm -hmm. his power numbers and all that Larry is on the year he's walked 50 times which is good for uh, third in the nation but he struck out just 43 mm -hmm. that's that's a great ratio right there. Jabba tries to fire him away, but goes inside. Two, He's not, not afraid to take a walk. 50 walks, it's a new record for a walks in a season for Manhattan. He also holds the record for career walks. And that's what, what uh, Kevin Layton likes so much about him. Is that he's not afraid. I mean, you see guys who like to go up and be free swinging, hit a lot of home runs. This is a guy with a lot of natural power who doesn't have to be swinging for the fence all the time. This is going to be interesting right here. Three, two is a count. Jabba, let's see if he goes. If he goes slider, he likes that slider. He loves to go that slider at times. He used to anyway in terms of, of his out pitch. Or he three balls and two strikes with one out. And Rosati taps one into his dugout over there. Rosati two time, the second time this year. He was chosen as a first team uh, all Mac player, first baseman. Chosen as the Mac preseason player of the year. And ball just misses inside. Ball four. Crowd doesn't like it. Yeah, neither did Java. You see the reaction there. He thought he made a pretty good pitch. Yeah, inside fastball. I think it was a little Number bit inside and a little bit up. Mm -hmm. John Fitzpatrick. Be that as it may, Rosati down at first base with the walk. Second walk given up by Java. And now Fitzpatrick, John Fitzpatrick will step in. He also has a solo home run again back in the second inning and goes after that first pitch. And I'll tell you what, he got every. Every ounce of his torso into that one. Holy moly. John Fitzpatrick. Well, that hit earlier, both of his hits earlier. He's now to 16 game hitting streak, is Fitzpatrick. Man, you got Rosati and then you got Fitzpatrick. That's just two dynamos, two power piston hitters back to back. And we saw the, the effect of that in the second inning with back to back home runs. Is Fitzpatrick now is run at one and one. Fitzpatrick out of Yonkers, New York. Played his high school ball at Iona Prep. The other thing impressive about Fitzpatrick, four time All Mac first yeah. team, but also three time first team academic All Mac. And you can only be academic All Mac three times. You're not eligible your freshman year. Every time he's been eligible, he's been an All American and an academic All American. You know what? It doesn't get any better than that. That is outstanding. Just, I mean, that's just terrific. And, and to be the ball player that he is, he's 31st in the nation in home runs, 27th in RBIs. Looking here to 2 1 pitch. And he drills one down, foul down the third base line. I tell you, this is the time of year, too, these ball players love because school's finally behind them, the finals are over, and they're just worried about baseball because focus. You know how difficult <laughs> it is to play baseball and be a student. And baseball is especially tough. All the it sports is. are difficult, but baseball, especially, you're just gone so much. Extremely tough. 
as Jabba tries to sneak one out to the outside edge and up a little bit. Doesn't work. Three balls and two strikes now. Larry, you're right, because it's usually a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday process, mm -hmm. and sometimes more than that. Let's look at it again here. Mm. Good job by Christie to try to frame it in. It didn't work, though, as Fitzpatrick is patient, staring. Runner going. Strike three, and there's a throw by Christie, and Rosati is going to be in there as Fitzpatrick trying to yank one out of here. But he strikes out instead. Six strikeout. Now batting the for baseman, Jabba Chamberlain. What a great jump there by Rosati. Uh, Christie really with no chance there. That base was stolen on, on uh, Jabba. He got a very good jump over there at first and was there well in time. Dom Lombardi steps in now. Running around at second base is Matt Rosati. Lombardi on the day. 0 for 1. Had a walk his last time up. Getting it a good clip this year, however, 324 with three home runs and 29 runs driven in. You know, back to your point eight earlier, it's it's not just the Thursday, Friday, Saturday games. They're playing midweek games sometimes on the road. You know, half the time you think about Nebraska's trip to Iowa midweek, their trip to Northern Iowa last year midweek. Um, so you're gone nearly every week, two, three, sometimes four days out of the week. It is tough duty, uh, without a doubt. And you admire these guys, and especially the people that can do well in the classroom mm -hmm. as we talked about Fitzpatrick Brandon Buckman second team mm -hmm. academic All-American for Nebraska Bryce Nimmo was an all district uh, academic uh, academic player so people that uh, we saw Jeff Lisey two years in a row academic All-American a couple of years ago for Nebraska so you admire those guys two and one on the, on the uh, uh, hitter and that is Lombardi and he stares at three and one now with two outs and Java doesn't want to lose this guy doesn't want to put another runner on base. Time for he and Christy to bear down. Lombardi, career 311 hitter for Manhattan. Here's a 3 1. Make it 3 2 now. Slider, just a perfect slider. But Lombardi just got frozen on. <laughs> The problem with his slider is it looks like his fastball is coming so hard and then it breaks right at that last second. Three, three, three and two that is. Ground ball and that's the second baseman open. So over to Buckman and Java and the Huskers avoid a problem here in the top of the sixth inning. No runs, hits or errors. One left on for Manhattan. Scores two to one. Stay right there. We'll be back in a moment. Did you know the University of Nebraska is envisioning a cure for cataracts, the number one cause of blindness in the world. And at our renowned center for mass spectrometry, Nebraska scientists have learned how to pinpoint the effects of disease on a molecular level. We have the experts, we have the tools, we have the vision. That's what you see at a major research university. There is no place like Nebraska. In times of danger, and disaster, in times of peace, in times of war, in times of joy, in times of pain, in every corner of the world, and right here at home, for their families, for their futures, for the incredible sacrifice they make for all of us, so that someday they can return to the people they love and the things they hold in their hearts. For all of this, it's this simple. We need them, they need us, and we need you, the USO, until everyone comes home. To find out more about the USO and how you can help, visit USO.org. And the road to Omaha, as you see, all the players or the teams that is involved here in Lincoln, the first step to the College World Series. And a great road it is, a great road to be on as Brandon Buckman will step in and he is two for two on the day and scored the Huskers' only run back in the fourth inning. Buckman at a 338 clip this year, 14 home runs and 51 runs driven in. Hit just two dingers last year. 
two home runs that is as a big bend and curveball and man he has command of that pitch. He has thrown that pitch for strikes all day against the Huskers. But what what Brandon did in the offseason was work on elevating his swing a little bit. He's always had pretty good power but. Ball just misses outside two balls and a strike now to Buckman but there he's always had pretty good power but you know he's hitting he's hitting line drives line shots hitting it very very hard elevated the swing a little bit what happened. His home run production went up by 12 incredible. <laughs> Patient eye up there now as he runs it three and one Buckman from Monument Colorado. He was a junior college all American back in 2004 at Garden City. Hit 335 for the Huskers last year drove in 30. Hits this one hard and sharp to left field but the left fielder is over there that's Nieto and right at Eric Nieto in left field. So Buckman goes down for the first time on a line drive to left field. Now batting Huskers right on the left fielder, five base runners on 18, through the first five innings. Andrew Brown. Andrew Brown will now step in. And what they need now just base runners. Still plenty of time in the ball game here but. You just want to get base runners on and try to. Close the margin here as they're behind 2 1 Nebraska behind 2 1 here. And there's that big bender that curveball again and for the Jaspers. Of course they're all intent they they know they've got a handle on this ball game Larry and they're going to try to keep it together. Andrew Brown it really one of these free swinging guys loves to. Have the you know the big shot likes to but a little hot and cold I mean. The wooden bat league last year he led the league in home run. Production. Boy, what a July he had though in one month 12 homers drove in 31 runs in 26 games. With a wooden bat. Well he's he's got excellent power a good size at six foot 195 good forearms you see those. Forearms right there in that shot. Uh, there you see Nick Durbin trying to. Frame that pitch but. Home plate umpire will have none of that that's Randy Doolin. Two and one now to count. To Andrew Brown. Last 15 games he's at 345 for the Huskers with five home runs and 13 driven in in the tournament. Big 12 tournament he had two games where he drove in game winning RBIs against Baylor and Texas takes that pitch for strike two. Two balls and two strikes now to Andrew Brown. Looks pretty good right. Mm -hmm. So the 2 2 pitch is on the way. And Brown is ready to go. It almost looked on the previous pitch aid like he was looking for a different pitch because even had he gotten around on that, he was way behind that. Brown played at times early in the year, then finally got to some playing time due to injuries for the Huskers and really capitalized on that as the ball is down and in the dirt. So Brown good patience up there three and two. His yeah. best series this year excuse me Larry's best series this year Andrew Brown. Uh, against Baylor he hit 556. In three ball games uh, with two home runs so. Big weekend in that uh, in that series go ahead. Larry. Well, yeah, a lot of times eight is a hitter you try not to guess but it's so difficult at times when. Ball hit high and deep into the gap into left center and. The ball's going to drop in. Brown skirting around second. He's going to dig hard and run for third. He's going to be in there safely with the triple. Andrew Brown. He guessed right there. Yeah, absolutely. And for Andrew Brown, it could have come at a better time. He didn't have a triple at all this year. That's his first triple on the year, and it gets this crowd excited. Well, he really just sat on this, extends the arms, now got it right out of the plate. I think if uh, hitter, Cody could have that pitch back, he would like it because he left that Gerd. right out over the plate, and Brown just delivered it to the deepest part of the park, right at that 403 mark. And he could have been in there standing up. They say life is, is timing in place, and uh, that ball is hmm. about 10 feet to the left. It's a home run, something that Andrew Brown has been used to here of late, but, uh, but he's down to third. Ball carries another three or four feet. He's got himself his 10th home run. But Andy Gertz now, man of the hour. Andrew hits one to the shortstop. And a good job over there by Ruiz to keep Brown at second base. Uh, we'll take 
And earlier today, head coach Mike Anderson had this to say about now Jeff Christie. The catcher, number well, Jeff's 16, a leader. Jeff's, Jeff's one Jeff of the, the, the best Christie. players for our program, and I mean this by this reason. He's a leader. He's vocal. Uh, he's aggressive. Uh, he, he's passionate. He's fearless. You name it, he does it. And, and guys literally watch what he does uh, to, to set the example. We're in a regional here, and some of our young guys have never been through that. And just to watch the way Jeff Christie puts his pants on, puts his shoes on, and walks on his baseball field, and the attitude that he has, that's contagious. Well, this is a situation here that Jeff Christie likes as he takes the first pitch in there for a call strike. Now, in that last play that mm -hmm. Ruiz made, you know, that is an absolutely tremendous play because the infield was drawn in. They were going to cut that run down at the plate if, if, he, if the runner at third, Brown, made a break. But Ruiz fielded the hot shot off the bat of Gurch, checked the runner at third, and then got the out. And the ball on the inside corner, Randy Dillon. Well, you're right, Andrew. In Manhattan, fortunate there that the ball it was hit hard, but right to Ruiz. And if it hadn't have been hit right to him, it would have been through because they were all in on the grass, the entire exactly. infield playing in to cut down that run. And they almost had him caught up at third. Very, very close. He had a notion to go mm. over there, but decided, well, I'm going to get a sure out here, give us two outs for sure, and uh, and maybe try to get us out of the inning right here as Christie fouls one over to the right side. But as we said earlier on in what adjusts at bats he likes this kind of situation he usually performs well with runners out there. He likes this kind of pressure situation comes through with the ball back. The count is 0 and 2 deep hole for Jeff Christie. Oh two on the way and just misses down low. It'll be interesting to see how crucial that last play was because with the infield drawn in, Gertz really did get through on that, hit it hard. Yep. I mean, that's one of those plays where three feet either way, and that's either a run or, as in, in this case, it was an easy out to first, and the run doesn't score. Now two down, and you're in a completely different situation. Last eight games, Christie's hitting 480 as he looks at this pitch outside and good patience, good work up of the play. By Jeff Christie. And again, he's had the hot bat for the Huskers here in the last eight ball games. Up to his average, almost 30 points since the last time we saw him, Larry, in that Creighton ball game. Mm -hmm. Two and two is a count, two outs. And Jeff Christie just continues to battle. Teammate of Alex Gordon at Lincoln Southeast. Alex, of course. Nebraska's All-American from last year, the Big 12 Player of the Year. Play well for the Rangers. First round pick by the Kansas City Royals and now playing well for the mm -hmm. Wichita Regulars. Exactly. The count is 2-2. There are two outs. There's a pitch and just misses. All three times at the plate, a Christie has worked the count full. Now both the previous two times he's, he's flown out to center. Both times, last time, of course, deep enough to get the sack fly and score the run. But all three times now he's been at the plate, he's worked that count for. And he has that opportunity again as the count is indeed full with two outs. And strike three, curveball. Jeff Christie looks at it. The runner, or this Huskers, leave a runner stranded out there at third base and miss a golden opportunity here. Manhattan two, Nebraska one. We'll be back right after this. Hey guys, are you hearing this? Not just bad in the rooms tonight. That's perfect. Perfect song. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think we was being watched by those serious satellites. Oh, hey. It's serious satellite radio. We do not use our satellites to watch you. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like it. Oh, good, because that could make things a little bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. Mom, Dad, this is Kevin. Hi. It's so good to meet you. Hi, Kevin. So any plans today? It's a beautiful day. Why don't you take a hike? No, you take a hike. This is... Ugh. Dad. What? You know, not all Jetta owners love hiking, Craig. Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 66% more likely to go hiking, but there's more to a Volkswagen owner than that. Lose your ignorance at thejetareport.com. Capital city in Nebraska here in Lincoln, Nebraska. The gold dome shining off in the distance, and there you see 
Haymarket Park, Hawks Field. We're somewhere right behind that uh, <laughs> that pitch roof. And this is this is probably my favorite shot right here. Mm -hmm. This is this is what I call the jewel of college baseball. We we sit here behind home plate, look straight out onto this tremendous field. Well done, right uh, into the outfield towards the, the football stadium. And there is that's like a five million dollar view right there. So, <laughs> Haymarket Park, Jasper's Jasper's great place to be, and here to take you home for baseball. seven, eight, nine. Here's Never my good friend Larry Putney. Well, thanks very much, Adrian. You know the, the skyline a little different, I think, for. These Manhattan players, as they look out over, they see a little different thing than we do. <laughs> they're, they're used to that L train, I think, being about two blocks from the stadium. And I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating. They're right there. I want to get off at 57th and East. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right there at the plaza. <laughs> I love New York. It's a great town, great place to go, and great place to work. And what do we have here? We have a. Well, the, the butt of the bat, you know, it, oh. it, it kind of snapped off. He was getting ready. He put his hands down at the bottom of the bat, right down at the butt, and it popped Snapped off. Snapped off? Yeah, it just kind of popped and hung there. He tried to call timeout. Umpire didn't give him timeout, so I'm not going to swing. <laughs> I'm gonna well, die. Ryan, you better call Mako. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about aluminum bats. It's the only, the only sport in the world where an auto mechanic or an auto body man is needed to take care of things. But uh, that's what happens with those things. So unfortunately for Marku, he goes down 0-2. Now it's 1-2 after the pitch is wide from Java. Marku, the sophomore, 5 Tim from New Milford, Connecticut. He's their solution at second base, but not this time at the plate. He swings through that for the first out of the top of the yeah, seventh man. inning. The K number seven number for Java. Renee Breaking Ruiz. ball looked like a curve ball that down in the dirt. Uh, actually, a, you know, a, a bad pitch to go after, obviously. But but Marcu went after it, and uh, Jabba gets his seventh strikeout on the day. And that brings up Ruiz, who swings through the high heat from Jabba. Ruiz, the cousin of Mike Garcia. Mike Garcia batting third in the order. They both came here from junior college in the same year. Two different junior colleges got together and said, let's head up to New York. We're from Miami. Let's experience the city and play a little baseball. Both doing quite well as both in the starting line. So they're, ta they're tapping talent, Larry, from uh, two excellent areas. You know, Miami and a lot of good baseball played in that New York area. So tapping good talent, yes, indeed. Let's say you right. Yep, he did. Java with mind. eight strikeouts and back to back here in the seventh. Now so things warming up a little bit for Java. Barrel of the bat's got to go up to the plate uh, beyond that front edge and uh, certainly did there. At least it looked like from my vantage point it did. So Rene Ruiz down on the strikeout. Java being very aggressive here at the bottom of the order. Really no problem with the bottom of the order today other than the one single by Ruiz. The bottom of the order. Combined one for nine. This Franzese. Two one. To Nunzio. Nunzio hitting just 224 on the year, and he pops that up high in the air. Java gives chase, as does Christie there, looking over his Mort. Mort and Java there. Mort takes it. Java ducks out just at the end of time. So Mort makes the play. It's a one, two, three inning in the top of the seventh. Nebraska trying to see if they can get something going as we head to the bottom of seven. Rachel, please. Can we, can we please just talk about this? Oh, nice. Perfect. It's like Sirius uses their satellites to figure out exactly what to play. Rachel, look out! <laughs> At Sirius Satellite Radio, we do not use our satellites to know exactly what to play. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like. Oh, well, I was just going to say that. Like we're reading your mind? Nah. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. Baseball's great. We have a lot of great players. These kids are playing because they love the baseball game. The games take on a playoff type atmosphere. Sliding, They're very intense. It's college baseball. You can't beat it. Come home to college baseball. Come home to college baseball. 
Would you like to lower your mortgage payments up to 33%? I could reduce my monthly payments? Tell me how. Introducing Smart Choice, the home loan exclusively from Quicken Loans. Whether you're buying a new home or refinancing, Smart Choice is the answer. Here's an example. A traditional 30-year loan for $200,000 at 7% interest would be $1,330 a month. But with Smart Choice, that same loan would be an amazingly low $895 a month. That's a difference of over $5,200 a year. That's good news. So what are we waiting for? Call toll-free now and see how you can lower your monthly payments up to 33%. The Smart Choice Loan. It's great for refinancing or for purchasing that new home. You get monthly payment flexibility, so you can decide to pay just interest or make payments to principal whenever you want. Call this toll-free number now or go to quickenloans.com to get started and lower your mortgage payments up to 33%. But don't wait. Take advantage today while rates are still low. If you think $5 doesn't go very far, wait till you see where it takes your television with DirecTV. Now, you can add over 30 exciting channels of awesome entertainment, amazing sports, really cool kids, and fascinating educational programming. Just transform your Total Choice package into Total Choice Plus for as little as $5 more per month. That's incredible value. Take a look at the Total Choice Plus package for free during its free preview weekend only on DirecTV. First base by Cody. Mort showed bunt. And Cody uh, made his delivery over to first base. Uh, Mort had squared around. Third baseman is in over there. And that's Lombardi. Mort squares to bunt. Pops it up on the infield. And an easy play by Cody. So not what you wanted to have happen when you're trying to sacrifice a runner in a scoring position. And Jake just gets under that and pops it up on the infield. Yeah, you just gave it away right there. Um, now batting. The left I'm not sure exactly what Number he was trying to do. It was a breaking pitch. And a lot of spin on that baseball, and the ball got on the top half, uh, top part of the ball bat there. Usually, when that ball, I always had a rule: if you if you square the butt and the ball is above the bat, and set it out where you know the top of your strike zone is. If the ball's above that, you don't go for it. Let her go. But uh, that just we just uh, the, the Huskers right there just gave one away. So that'll bring up. Nick Jaros, the honorable mention All Big 12. Well, Jaros has been injured as well. We talked about some of the outfield injuries that the Huskers have gone through this year. Brown was injured, Gore set down now. Jaros had some hand trouble earlier this year. Both hands at one point bother him. He lines that nice play at short by Ruiz. Flips the first, try to turn two, but that is thrown into the stands. He'll get second automatically. A wide throw by Marcou. Who is trying to turn two? So it puts a Husker in scoring position with two down. Now batting, Ball the had the base hit written on it, but Ruiz Number was able to take care of that and Bryce make the relay Nimmo. over to Marku. But then Marku is going to airmail one over into the stands for the air. And that'll put Jaros down at second base. So the error charged to Marku, his 19th error of the season. And Adrian, we talked about it off the top. Defense was going to be key for this Manhattan squad. They're fielding at just a 954, committed a lot of errors, especially in that middle infield. And this, we'll see if it rears its ugly head for Manhattan as it the plate now. Well, Larry, a, a, a really good play got the front end of the double play started. Uh, excellent play by Ruiz. Hot shot off uh, off the ball bat, and then bingo uh, off the ball bat of Jarrell said is, and then bingo. You know, you make the one throw and get that out, and then a problem on the throw. And it was a tough play, tough play to spin and throw and to keep it under control. The count even now to Nemo. The Cody delivery in there for a strike. Sometimes it takes a situation like this for somebody to break out of a slump. And boy, what a great time this would be for Bryce Nemo to come through. Nemo struggling at the plate. In there in the order because of the injury to Luke Gorsett. Gorsett, of course, Huskers all Big 12 outfielder hitting 352 on the year. 15 homers. It's taking away a lot of offense. Well, it's like taking Fitzpatrick out of their offense. Mm. And he's got one of their home runs today and one of their runs. Nemo, earlier in the year, he had a great start up in the DQ Classic uh, that they played in much earlier in the year. He had 545 and actually won the award for, uh, you know, for the outstanding player, the Silver Stick Award, <laughs> they call it up there. But 
Uh, he, he's a he's a quality baseball player, but man, he has just hit a stretch here where nothing works, nothing's going right. I thought if it was a Dairy Queen Classic, it would be the Silver Spoon Award. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Nemo. He slaps that, but Ruiz is there across the diamond in time. Bryce tried to make it close, but For the Huskers, third the out of the Huskers inning, and the Huskers let another no scoring run, opportunity one slip one by. We head to the eighth. Manhattan on top, 2-1. We're on a journey of discovery, a journey that is unlocking the secrets of disease at the genetic level. The result? Revolutionary cancer vaccines and research breakthroughs in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And with every discovery, we provide new knowledge to thousands and new hope, one patient at a time. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. On a good day, I would barely make a splash. Now, I hope for as much impact as possible. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. With great privilege comes great responsibility. Most of my generation felt that as younger people, and it's time for us to feel that again. There are many ways to get involved in your community. Join thousands by finding which opportunity is best for you. Lead, inspire, change the world. Again, call 1-800-424-8867 today or visit www.getinvolved.gov. That is a great place to watch a ball game from. The Berms at Haymarket Park. Kick back, throw out the blanket, relax on a gorgeous afternoon here in Lincoln, Nebraska for NCAA Regional Baseball. It's turning ever more so scary for those in the stands, though, as the Jaspers have a 2-1 lead. Nieto yeah, swings through that offering. Larry, it's getting down to, to crunch time. As a matter of fact, we're there. And the Huskers have uh, missed two opportunities here the last couple of innings. And they've got 8-9 to, to get her done. And uh, with, Co with Cody going the way he is and the way he pitches, you know, you got to think if... If uh, something really untoward doesn't happen, that's that's going to be mm -hmm. tough. But um, we'll see what happens here. All the credit to Manhattan. They really they, they came here today and they said at the press conference yesterday, we're mm -hmm. you know hey, we're here to play. We're not too terribly impressed with all the other stuff. We're just here to play. As Jabba misses wide, uh, way wide, that last pitch. So tough baseball here in the last two innings. Count even now to Nieto, who was the. Most outstanding player of the conference tournament in the MAC tournament, hitting 425 in his last 10 games, 16 runs, 17 hits, 10 of 12 stolen bases just in the last 10 games, 10 of 12. And there's a look at Jabba, who has done his job for the day, gave up two long balls. That kind of a little scored out there just over. The outstretched arm of Opitz for a single. So the Manhattan Jaspers get the leadoff runner on here in the top of the eighth. Now they all look the same in the, the scorebook catcher, is what we say. A little flare hit as we see the Nick Nebraska Durba. bullpen. Brett Jensen Brett out there. Brett Jensen on the right there. The Nebraska's career all-time mm -hmm. saves leader and record holder. Nieto at first base, Larry, and again, we talked about pressure on the defense, mm -hmm. and he's the guy that can do it. This is the first time he's been on base today, and you know he's going to try to make a mark. You know it. 38 stolen bases in 42 attempts, and they'll lay down the sacrifice. That's up in the air. Mort there to make the play, and he does. Mort, the recipient of the bad bunt this time. So oh, that's saw, one out yeah, in the top of the eighth. The saw it happen to the Huskers, and now we see it happen to see that ball's Monica up again, and, he, and it's coming right off the top of the bat. Great shot by our first base camera right there. Excellent shot. Gives you just a bird's eye view of how that play unfolds. 
So that'll bring up Mike Garcia. Garcia, as we said earlier, the cousin of Ruiz, the shortstop for Manhattan. 0 for 3, his last time up. Went down swinging. Jeff Christie knocked it down through to first for the strikeout. They're watching closely over at first, Eric Nieto. Nieto to Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. Back in there, just in time. You see it happen often in baseball where a pitcher will go back time and time again. And what you're trying to do there is you're just trying to you're trying to lull that base runner into just a little bit of a there he goes. You pitch up, Christy throws down, not in time to get him. The ball stays right there. So Nieto with his first stolen base in this regional, his 39th stolen base on the season. Now 39 of 43. One more look. Christy coming up out of there and uh, is watching just to see how he's going to get that ball up out of the glove. And he, he looked like he shuffled the hand in the glove. He, there was no break in his motion, but he shuffled the hand in the glove. Maybe didn't have quite the good grip, and the ball drifted a little bit to the right hand side. Uh, Nieto in there with a stolen base. And it's he knew it was coming. He just knew it was coming. It's amazing what a fleet runner on the base pads can do as that's lined sharply into left. Up with it for the Huskers is Jaros. They'll hold the runner at third. So the single by Garcia puts runners at first and third with one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Nebraska down one, two one. Jasper's trying to add to that lead. Fastball right about belt high, a little bit to the inside part of the plate. Yeah, Garcia able to the just Tommy Hawk it right into left field. Great job out there Man by Jaros to come up with a baseball and uh, that little motion moving forward, get that body and that momentum moving forward and make the good throw, and he did. And Mike Cole, the third base coach for Manhattan, is now giving out some signals. And here comes Mike Anderson for a talk with Jamba Chamberlain and his uh, his bunch. It's not often the Mike comes out for a talk. No, he just came out to signal that he wants to make a change. Mm -hmm. So Jamba Chamberlain. Will be responsible for the two runners at first and third. He gives up six hits on the day. And right now, two runs. The book will not be closed on Java, though. Now we talked to, to Kevin Layton before the contest as we have a pitching change here, and you see the crowd appreciative of Java's effort for the day. We talked to Kevin Layton about being in Lincoln, Nebraska and playing in front of these fans. It's definitely interesting. It's a it's a different part of the world uh, of the country. And you know, I myself have never been to Nebraska. I've been a, to a lot of places in the country. Uh, but there's nothing that compares to New York City. Uh, it's beautiful out here. I love it. The weather's great. Uh, the city is nice. I mean, it's a nice, quiet town. There's nobody beeping at you. I mean, it, there's no garbage trucks waking you up in the morning, things like that. So. Uh, it's very peaceful and we like it, so I, I hope we can stay for a few days. Well, they're certainly in good shape right now to do that. A 2-1 lead with runners at first and third, and now in the game for the Huskers is the lefty, Zach Herr. Freshman out of Omaha, Scott, 5'9", 170 pounds. He's their top left-handed option coming out of the bullpen for the Huskers. They'll run it up there about 85 to 87. Excellent curveball, mixes the curveball with the fastball. Played for Keith Engelkamp, Omaha Scott. And there are the numbers on Zach. 2 1 1 earned run average. Uh, excellent ERA in those 21 innings that he has pitched. This will be his 24th time up on the mound for the Huskers, and a big job he had. One out here in the top of the eighth inning. The Jaspers have a 2, uh, two to 1 lead. And runners at the corners, as Larry told you a moment ago. Now we want to hear from everyone watching the 2006 NCAA Baseball Regionals here on NET and CSTV. Let us know where you're watching from and if you're enjoying our coverage. You can write us at that address right there. NET Sports, P.O. Box 83111, Lincoln, Nebraska 68501, or you can email us at sports at netnebraska.org. Please take a moment and let us know what you think about the regionals from right here 
in Haymarket Park. So Zach Kerr now on the hill for the Huskers. He will face Matt Rosati. Huskers going with that lefty on lefty matchup and her touching that outside corner for strike one. Rosati didn't necessarily agree. Good, good breaking pitch, Larry, that ran up there and then ran out. Ran out and away from Rosati. We talked about how dangerous Rosati is. 14 doubles, three triples, nine homers now in the season after his homer back in the second inning to give the Jaspers the one nothing lead to break it open a bit. And the throw over. And they're going to call a Bach on her and Mike Anderson not happy and that will score the run from third. So trotting in from third will be the eighth though and Mike Anderson moves quickly across the diamond to have a discussion. Mike is talking to the first base umpire over there. That's Steve Mattingly and trying to get an explanation as to why the bulk was called there. Mike splitting his case. He said something that uh, Mattingly mm. agreed with. I'm not sure what mm -hmm. it would have been, but uh, huge, huge play. Yeah, we watched uh, the play there. You have to be gaining ground, is what the book says, towards. Let's see where this right leg goes. Mm -hmm. That's boy, that's awfully close. It, it really is. I don't know that he was gaining ground towards first base that, in that situation. Now Mike has played his case. Head coach Mike Anderson will make his way off the field. Jaspers pick up a run here in the eighth inning. An important run it is, all right. So that makes it 3-1. The Bach on her scores the run, and now Garcia is at second. Another excellent pitch by Zach Herr. Really working that curveball. Known primarily for the curveball and the fastball. It's two pri or primary pitches. And a lot like uh, a lot like Chris Cody, Larry, he's, he's not going to overpower you. He's going to go 85, 87, decent number, but uh, not terribly in the terribly suited to the overpowering situation. Lats lifted just out of play. Garcia breaking on the play. Rosati trying to protect the runner. Uh, you know, if, if he gets it in there safely, that's a sure score without a doubt. And then Garcia alertly you know, he came down to third base and stepped on it. And he knew the ball was uh, in, in foul territory, but didn't know where. So he made a beeline back to second base. So he didn't get double off over there. One ball, two strikes to Rosati. Fouled back. You know, Rosati leads this team in batting average at 349, on base percentage, hits, triples. They say, <laughs> they say he's having an off season. Yeah. He had 416 last year, and it was funny. You know, we talked with uh, Kevin Layton before the game, and he said, "I know it sounds strange to say, but he's not having a great year." <laughs> kind of hard to believe that. And that's lined out to left field. Will it be fair? It is fair. And scoring from second will be Garcia. So the single by Rosati scores another one. And now Manhattan has widened that lead. It's 4-1. Jespers on top of the Huskers. Normally not a ball that comes off the bat of Rosati. That was just a little flare. I used to still do call it a little uh, sadly league single. A little uh, flare as Larry called it. And it just drops in there. But again in the book tomorrow it's, it's a single and an RBI. And all important gives, uh, gives them a three run lead here. So. Now you're faced with another bomber in John Fitzpatrick. The single by Rosati scores Garcia, and that will also close the book on Java Chamberlain. Java giving up four runs on six hits, eight strikeouts, and two walks. Top of the eighth, 4-1 Jaspers. And you know, Larry, it's been the it's been the problem for Java. In the last half of the season, that he just hasn't had the run scored behind him, and in two of those games, uh, he just had two runs, two runs, and one run scored. Today, it's just one run and five hits for the Huskers. 
So many times you get into this regional action and you see a team like Manhattan, which makes it into a regional, and they have a pitcher or they have a player or two. And Manhattan's a very well put together team. They have some bats and they have some good pitching and they have even people um, behind them. They have a couple of starters they consider number one starters. Is that's in there for a strike? Two and two now. Yeah, you'll look at uh, Josh Santera as the pitch comes in. Nice breaking pitch right on the outside corner. Excellent pitch by here. But Josh Santera will uh, help you out of the mound. Ground ball to short. That's to Worley trying to turn two. Opens over to Buckman, and they turn the double play, but not before. Manhattan scores two in the top of the eighth, and talk about a hill to climb. Nebraska six outs away from losing their first regional game. They're down 4-1. We'll come back for the bottom of the eighth. Low-fat cheese sandwiches on whole wheat bread are high in calcium to help build strong bodies. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Visit smallstep.gov. Of people lately. Introducing Power Bar Triple Threat. It fuels like a power bar and tastes like a candy bar. One bite and you'll feel like you can take on anything. Be great. Long run for Lewis. He makes the grab. College baseball is great. We have a lot of great players. These kids are playing because they love the baseball game. The games take on a playoff type atmosphere. Sliding grab. They're very intense. It's college baseball. You can't beat it. Come home to college baseball. Come home to college baseball. And there are the Jasper fans all the way from New York here in Haymarket Park enjoying their club's lead right now, and they are on top four to one and putting the pressure on the Huskers. So to lead it off for Nebraska. In the bottom of the eighth will be Ryan Worley. He tries to get the bunt down, and that is just foul. Well, he had uh, Dom Lombard. They know uh, what Worley can do, and he was playing deep at third base, and uh, Ryan Worley picked that up. So today, maybe I can get on base uh, with a little drag and mm -hmm. tried to put it down, but he just uh, about a foot and a half to the left. trying to get something going here in the bottom of the eighth down four to one and as we were saying earlier a lot of times you will see these regional teams with an outstanding pitcher come in and cause trouble and it's not unusual for a four seed to come in and knock off a number one seed in regional play I think regionals have been going on since 99 and on 13 different occasions a four seed is knocked off a number one that didn't happen last year but um, the year before that it happened four different regionals the four seed knocked off the one seed in the first game. Now, four seed has never won a regional. So that is a long shot. You talk about, again, being out in front. That last pitch was a floater up there. I'm not really sure it was a changeup of some sort, but uh, Worley was way, way out ahead. Now, here's a tough play. Going to be a problem. Worley will dig for two, and he'll be in there with a double. You saw the right fielder, Nunzio Francesi, kind of lose his balance. He was trying to dig too hard. He lost his balance when he came uh, when he came on that track to, to get to the baseball. Lost his balance and lost his glove, quite frankly. The first baseman. So and we're down at second. 19. So leadoff Brandon. double. Is now three on the day. He hit the ball hard last time as well, a line straight to left field. And that's line right at the shortstop who makes a nice backhanded grab just over his shoulder. But Buckman continues to put good wood on it. Let's go down to Matt Davison who has a special guest, Matt. Now yeah, guys, I'm sitting here with a father that's pretty happy right now, Joe Cody, and your, your son, Chris, is really just having a special day here in a special stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska. It has to be a, a, a big-time day for you and your family. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, he's, he's just thrilled to be here. Uh, you know, winning the MAC championship was great, but this is uh, coming out here to play ball is just fantastic. And, uh, the boys have been telling me uh, on the phone all the last couple of days how much they enjoyed the, 
the fans out here have been great to him. Well, I know uh, Chris is quite a battler, and he's in the eighth inning right now against a pretty salty Nebraska team, but he's a kid, as you were saying, that has a lot of confidence, and he was looking forward to this as a challenge here today. He, he doesn't throw the ball uh, rocket uh, speed by or anything, but he, uh, he's got pretty good placement, and, uh, and he's persistent, so uh, he's, he's doing good. He's been doing good. This has been a good year for him. He's, uh, he's had a, a great ERA. Well, 1.45 he ended up with, so uh, he's been doing good. Well, Joe, welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska, and, and uh, I'm glad it's been a good day for you and Chris and your family. Well, thanks for having and, uh, and I'll tell you, the fans have been great here so far. We, uh, we love it out here. Back to you guys. And that's a proud papa there, and for good reason, Chris Cody shutting down this Nebraska lineup. That's dribbled right back to Nevins, who's now playing second. So Andrew Brown goes down for the second out here in the bottom of the eighth. Well, Larry, yesterday Chris Cody said that, you know, this whole atmosphere and what he's about to embark on was really. Now batting. Uh, the he, he was hitter. so excited that he was going to finally experience his dream. Experience his dream. And here it is right now. And he's still baseball left to play here. Nobody's giving up uh, the ghost right now, but uh, uh, no doubt he is in the driver's seat. Well, I don't know if there's a guy who can change Gurch. Gurch, one of the top hitters for the Huskers since. Of course, he had a flare-up of a shoulder injury and the death of his father, Terry. He spent some time away from the game. Now he's back and hitting 356 with 13 RBI, 11 runs in his last 15 games. Well, he's he's experienced the pressure. We saw him last year against Arizona State in that second game they played against ASU. He had a, a three-run home run in the ninth inning against Arizona State. Nebraska took the lead. Is he way out ahead of that one though? As Cody just continues to keep the Husker hitters guessing up on the front foot and way out in front, but. He is uh, experienced, uh, you know, the high drama, mm -hmm. and he's, he can get her done. It, it's just that he's never had to probably get her done against a guy that is so uh, so crafty with his with his tray. The pitch the way he does with such great finesse. Inside corner, strike three, and Cody has been masterful, shutting down another Husker scoring opportunity. We go to the final frame, and the Huskers are down three. Hey, guys, are you hearing this? I just bad in your rooms tonight. That's perfect. Perfect song. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think we was being watched by those serious satellites. Oh, hey. It's serious satellite radio. We do not use our satellites to watch you. We just play great songs all the time, so it seems like it. Oh, good, because that could make things a little bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. It's like we know. Hear the sports talk and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius, the best radio on radio. Hey. Hey. Maybe you can give me a call sometime? Yeah, I would love that. Show me the downward facing dog. I'm, I'm sorry, what? You know, because all you guys know how to do yoga. You guys. Look, not all Jetta owners know yoga. I'm. And you got the foot in the mouth position, right? Stereotyping is stupid. Sure, Volkswagen owners are 115% more likely to enjoy yoga, but don't assume they all do. Lose your ignorance at thejettareport.com. Terrific day here at Haymarket Park, especially for the Manhattan Jaspers who have come in from Manhattan to enjoy this game and day and see their team leading the Huskers heading to the top of the ninth inning, four to one in Nebraska with another pitching change. Another pitching change. Eric Bird, the big right-hander, 6'2", 215 pounds. He's a freshman from Omaha, Burke, played for Mike Sortino over there at Burke, and he will step in today. He'll go 88 to, to 90 as far as that fastball. There are the numbers 0-2 on the year with a .06 earned run average. Best in the relieving staff. 21 appearances will be trying to just shut her down here. Just make sure that uh, Manhattan does no more damage here in the ninth inning and give his team a chance to make it up in the bottom of the ninth. He'll run it up 88 to 90. Throw some that mid knee area. Watch him here. See right there, kind of a mid knee delivery. 
good sinker, good slider, good changeup. So Eric Bird on the mound for the Huskers. And really unusual aid for is that's hit hard to Buckman. Nice play there. Bird covering in time for the first out here in the top of the ninth. So Lombardi goes down. One to three. That'll bring up Ryan Marcou. Ryan Marcou, the sophomore from New Milford. Unusual though to see a freshman come in like Eric Bird change his arm slot and still be this effective. I mean he has been a surprise this year. Indeed. As I think we have a, a pitch. Uh, do we have a pinch up there? Yes. This is Matt Nevins. Nevins, Nevins, Nevins now yes. in for Marcou at second. Nevins is also the closer for Manhattan. So we may see him in the night depending on whether they want to trot Comey back out there and he lifts that over. Buckman has it in foul territory for the second out. So two down here in the top of the ninth. Now batting the shortstop. Number that'll four, bring up Ruiz, the Rene shortstop. Ruiz. In case you're wondering, do up for Nebraska, Jeff Christie, Jake Opitz, and Jake Mort. Hitters 7 8 9 for Nebraska in the bottom of the inning. Mike Anderson told us before the game that while he didn't think Gorsett could play the field, wouldn't be surprised to see him in a DH role. So we may look for that in the bottom of the ninth as well. I think you, I believe, just one hit, yes. Opitz. Take Opitz got hit in the seventh inning, I believe, everybody else. Has come up empty. Well, Christy had that sack fly that brought in the lone uh, run the Huskers have scored. Ruiz came up empty there. He's now down 0 and 2. Fouled back. Delivered from Bird gets him, so Ruiz goes down, swinging in the ninth, and Nebraska heads to the bottom of the ninth, down by three. They need three runs to stay alive. 4-1 Jaspers. We'll be back with the final frame. For technology to advance as rapidly as it has, technology education must advance even faster. The University of Nebraska has built an institute that will impress even the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies. Because the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies help design the curriculum. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. With great privilege comes great responsibility. My generation felt that as younger people, and it's time for us to feel that again. Growing up economically challenged, I understand what it means to be destitute. I understand how it feels to be hungry. If you help someone else, it comes around at a time when you might need help. I like what I do. It gives me a lot of satisfaction. This is a great country. If people were to go ahead and step up to the plate by volunteering or doing something for their fellow man, this country will be greater than it ever was. Today, our efforts are needed more than ever. Because as a generation, we do have work to do. Join thousands by finding which opportunity is best for you. Lead. Inspire. Change the world. Again. Call 1-800-424-8867 today or visit www.getinvolved.gov. Three outs to get things done for the Huskers. And up first, Jeff Christie takes first ball for a strike. And again, that curveball, he has really made a living here this afternoon against the Huskers with that slow curve, working it right on the outside half. Christie... That's foul. Ripping one foul. Now he finds himself down 0 and 2. Still out there. Chris Cody, as we would have expected. <laughs> 1 2 now to the Husker catcher. Just an example there. Fastball, low and away. Just trying to test the hitter, try to test Christie to see if he'd go for it. Good patience by Jeff. And Swings through. 
So the first out in the bottom of the ninth for the Huskers, Jeff Christie goes down swinging. Now batting. And that will bring up Jake Opitz. Number three, Jake Edible Opitz. pitch right there, but, but again, just the timing not correct with Christie as far as the hit go, hitting goes. And Cody records his seventh strikeout on the day. Now Opitz at the plate. One for three on the afternoon. He singled his last time at the plate. Started out curveball again. Down 0 1. Huskers have really struggled to find anything today against Chris Cody. But that's been the case so many times this year for the senior from Brewster, New York. Well, Larry, they. they through eight, they've left eight on base. And again, Opitz out in front, way ahead of the pitch. It's a little nubber back to the screen. And again, golden opportunities. There is the Husker dugout, and obviously looks of concern. Mm -hmm. Down three. One gone here, bottom of the ninth inning, in the first game here of the Lincoln Regional. Opitz lines that foul. And into the berm area. But the Huskers left two on in the third and, and single runners all the way through the rest of the innings, but a golden opportunity in the sixth with Andrew Brown down at third base and Jeff Christie not able to come through as he usually does, looking at a called third strike. Opitz, that's fair. Up with it is Lombardi across the diamond, but not in time. So Nebraska's hopes alive as Opitz gets an infield single. You won't see a hugger like that uh, very often. That ball hugging the line, going right over the base, and that is indeed a fair ball. A great call over there. Uh, Bill Speck, the third the base umpire, baseman. right on it as you Number see two, Dom Lombardi making a great play. And again, as a, as a player, it's like in any other sport, <laughs> just make the play. Let him call it afterwards. If it's foul, it's foul, but make the play. Make the play. So life here in the Huskers is Opitz, second base hit of the day. And Huskers trying to make it happen. So that'll bring up Jake Moore with Opitz at first. Huskers now with seven hits on the day, equaling the hit total for Manhattan. Also seven hits. Manhattan's line, four runs, seven hits, one error. Nebraska's one run, seven hits, no errors. That's upstairs to Mort. He evens the count at one. Bottom of the ninth inning. Nebraska down three. Opens it first. Jake Mort. The plate. Lifted into left center. Is Nieto. And he makes the play for the second out of the inning. So Jake Mort flies out to out and Nick Jero stepping to the plate. Now batting. All up to Jero, youngster from Platte City, Missouri. Nick and I guess if I'm Mike Anderson, head coach of Nebraska, and you're in this situation, he's the guy I want up right now mm -hmm. because he is a fighter. He has that glint in his eye. He's a never give up guy ever. And he's gonna battle up there. So let's see what happens. He's had a tough day here at the plate, however. He's 0 for 4 on the day. And first one in there for his strike as Cody has done out throughout the afternoon. One strike to Jaros. Jaros hit 390 in Big 12 play this year. First Husker to hit 390 or better in Big 12 play since Matt Hopper. Use a little right now. Huskers down 4-1. Not even a one. Opens it first. Jaros. Fair ball. Up with it across the diamond is Lombardi. Not in time. Nebraska still alive. Back to back hits right on the chalk over there. Both times Lombardi has been there, but right on the chalk and has not made the throw across the diamond. <laughs> Well, as we said earlier on, he's the guy who went up there to battle. And now we're going to have yeah. a pinch hitter, and here comes Luke Gorsett. And you can hear the fans chanting Luke as we take one more look at that. Hot action down there at third again for Dom Lombardi, the third baseman. 
When you have a pitcher like Cody on the mound, you're going to get quite a bit of action down there because guys are ahead, as we've seen all day. Guys are ahead with a ball bat. As Gorsett now will step in, and we'll see uh, very quickly. Just you know, the bad back situation might be what you want right here mm. because he might be a little more prone just to hold back a little bit and be a little more measured in his cut Luke and uh, you know try to deliver. But Luke Gorsett will step in. And this guy, as we said earlier on, uh, Larry, he's, he's been a, a main offensive cog for the Huskers this year. 350, 15 home runs. Just be patient at the plate is what he's held himself right now. So runners at first and second, and once again, Cody working ahead. No balls, one strike now to Luke Gorsett. Of course, he had all the home run power early on in the season. Struggled with that back. Has curtailed his power numbers, but still hitting 350. He lifts that to center field, but measuring it is Garcia underneath it. And the Jaspers have come to Lincoln and knocked off the number one seed in the Lincoln Regional. The Huskers fall four to one to Manhattan as Cody is bobbed at the mound. The Jaspers four, Huskers one. Well, they said coming in, the Jaspers said coming in that we're here to play. And, and uh, you know, as I said at the, the top of the show, they didn't get uh, too terribly uh, worried or scared or impressed or on about anything here. They loved what they saw as far as this ballpark goes. And they said, hey, we're here to play. We're here to make our mark. We're not happy to be here. We want to win. And uh, they came out and played that way today. And again, starting out very quickly in the second inning, Matt Rosati and John Fitzpatrick both cranking out solo shots, solo home runs to give them a two run lead that held up and uh, held up from the beginning. And uh, they cashed in two more runs in the eighth inning, Larry. We came away with a four to one win. The Huskers had opportunities. They really did. They left uh, nine men on base. Let's check it here. Ten men on base uh, in the ball game. And as we said earlier on, again, top of the show. The LOBs, you can't mm -hmm. have that. You got to bring them home. Battle and score. Battle and score. So the Huskers lose the opener in the regional to the Manhattan Jaspers. 4 1 the final. We'll be back and tell you what this means for the Huskers after the break. Hey, Zachary. You ready? You looking good. The odds of a child becoming a professional athlete are 1 in 16,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit AutismSpeaks.org. You've just won the National College Field Hockey Championship. What are you doing next? I'm going to my dorm to study for my calculus final. <laughs> On a good day, I would barely make a splash. Now, I hope for as much impact as possible. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. writers of Scary Movie comes the unrated version you couldn't see in theaters. Own Date Movie on DVD today.
one regional down, so many, many, many more to come. Welcome inside the Fieldhouse here in New York. This is Game Tracker Live. Greg Amson alongside Eric Sorensen. He's our national writer for college baseball for CSTV. He's going to be here with us all weekend long, getting you up to speed what's going on in college baseball. Reminder, at the top of the hour, 5 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to take you out to the Houston Regional, the number one team in the land, the Rice Owls, will be taking on Prairie View A&M, the Panthers. So that game coming up in moments here on CSTV. But Eric, I want to pick your brain here the Manhattan Jaspers here's the team that created the school created the seventh inning stretch I never knew that they created the biggest upset so far of the, of the tournament knocking off Nebraska and Lincoln it was huge yeah it, it is a big upset obviously a four beating a one is a huge thing uh, last year we didn't see any four seeds beat a one seed in the first round of the tournament but the year before we saw five of them do it and I don't know if anybody would be really shocked by it if they noticed that Nebraska has been pretty cold the last few weeks and uh, Manhattan's won la nine of their last ten, and Chris Cody, their pitcher, is a, a, a damn good pitcher, and he uh, he shut out Tulane earlier this year. Well, you have to hope for Jasper fans that this isn't just an aberration and they can continue their success. Yeah. Let's move on. The Texas Longhorns, defending champs, ready to defend their national title, taking on in-state rival Arlington. Not sure rival may be an overstatement, but the 29-34 and 34 Mavericks did beat Texas back in April 6-3. to three. Could they pull off the upset again? Let's check out how the horns are hanging right now in the Austin Regional. It's two to nothing in the bottom of the second. Burham one for one.